I'm with some of that. I'm with some of that. And uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab some food.
That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Stop. No. 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 Shut up. I want them to stop. Whatever. Mm. Yep. See the Kometo right there? That's the same. SpaceX uses that exact thing. That exact one. Like this one. Right there. They use that exact thing to move Falcon 9s around. Yep. And I'm not talking like another version of this. I'm talking that physical one. This Kometo. This one was specially built to move space shuttles around. Particularly at Vandenberg. And then when the Air Force pulled out of Vandenberg, it pulled out of the shuttle program, right? Shuttle program pulled out of Vandenberg. They, they brought this over to the Cape and they used it to move shuttles around at the Cape. And then after, when the shuttle program ended, NASA put it out in a scrapyard and they auctioned it off and SpaceX bought it. And then they, now they use it to move Falcon, 9, move Falcon 9 first stages around. True story. That thing, that thing right there has been in use through the shuttle program and the Falcon program over the course of 40 years almost. Also Airstream 310, I want it. Can you link this vid? Sure, man. This is footage of the shuttle moving around at Vandenberg. I saw a couple of you guys trying to guess it. Uh, somebody said it right. Who said it? Uh, uh, blah, blah. Turkey Burger. Yeah, you're right, dude. It's Vandenberg. Yep, too many hills to be Florida. But uh, yeah, really, really cool. You know what the crazy part is? All right, see right there? That exact road. I know exactly where this is. I've driven tough enough on that road right there. Right where that truck is. I've, I've Route 154 to up this road. To the south, to the to the launch pad south gate. Where the where uh, Lompoc Surf is, the train station. It's down there. Dude, it's weird to me. I've driven, I've, we drove right up this road. That could move Starship too if they wanted, right? Probably not. It's too small. Your Starship animation is finally done. Oh. Oh. Oh, that ain't bad. Hey, I like the I like the engine shot. Hey, it's coming along, dude. I, oh, the payload bay doors. You have the right payload bay doors. And you made it go and grab Hubble. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah, they cut and graded the hills, Morton. And notice, I always say, look for the weird roads, right? You know, you're looking for space infrastructure. Space infrastructure is very unique. It's usually really freaking heavy. So you usually you usually look for, like, heavy roads. Check it out. You want to go look at Vandenberg? I'll show you exactly where that shot is. Uh, right there. See? The road, Google Earth ain't doing the road justice, but... Yep, they planed it all for the space shuttle. That's how I know I've driven up that road because I, I've seen those. I've seen those planes. I've seen those dunes. And then the gate to Vandenberg is right here, right? And there's a train station right there, Lompoc Surf. Literally driven, driven the truck right there. It's it's strange to me that I I could we could get in tough enough we could drive right to this spot. I've done it before, which is that's strange, dude. You can see Slick 4 and Slick 5 from, or Slick 3 and Slick 4 from here. Uh, so the Atlas pad and then the Falcon 9 pad. You can see it clear as, well, clear as day. I did. We didn't get very good reception out there, though, so I wasn't able to stream it. We lost reception right around here during Route 154. But uh, also, take a look. See the weird angle? The weird angled road right there? It's for moving the shuttle, or at least it was. There's another weird angled road. Uh, where is it? We gotta find the weird angly boy roads. There it is. Yep. See that? You saw that moving in the video. That's very weird, right? Why would you do that? Why would that road be there? This is just a low density, low density four way intersection, right? Well, that's there. Because of. Please hold. There it is. There's the shuttle going through that intersection right there. Boop. And that's what it looked like in 1985. Because that's when this picture, that's when this footage was shot. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? 
See, there it is. And also, I love these trucks, man. These trucks are really cool. You got an Airstream 310 right there. They got a couple of Broncos and a square body. Mm, oh boy. Can I have just everything in this picture? I just need all of the things in this picture. I, I, want, I want the K20. I want the Bronco. I'll take that Econoline. I'll take the other Econoline. I want that deuce and a half, and I want the Space Shuttle and the Airstream. I just... Everything in this shot, I need. Okay? Where's OJ? Wrong Bronco. Wrong Bronco. I saw an Elko in there, Tars. That's my birthday, 85. Was this not March of 85? I'm not exactly sure when this was. Wrong go. No. Wrong, wrong go. Wrong Rango? What else we got in there? Oh. oh, it's a Ranger. Okay. Nope. No, it's not. It's a Nissan. Ew. Or Datsun. It's still a Datsun. Yep. Slick 6. Supposed to be a shuttle pad. Built the entire shuttle pad. Never used it. I mean, mini trucks are cool, okay? Mini trucks are all fine and dandy, but they ain't no... They ain't no Bronco. They ain't no Bronco, okay? They ain't no square body. You know? See that right there? You think the guys in that truck ever realized that this thing could go for over 50 Gs? That truck in that condition would go for a very, like, a lot of money. You could sell that and buy, like, a fully loaded Model 3 and... Yeah. I don't know if you'd have money left over, but that's how much those things go for in good condition nowadays. It's kind of weird. Everybody decided that that truck was cool again all of a sudden. I'll just take the Bronco. Bronco prices are still really low. Just for the people that for, for, the, for the people that care about this information, I don't think anybody, I mean, an 85 bullnose Bronco like that, and that in that condition, it's not going to be as much as the K20. K20 is way more expensive. My brother had a Bronco for a long time. I like Broncos, man. I like them. They're cool trucks. My truck's cooler. But anyway, yeah, that was footage uh, moving around Vandenberg. So let's jump into space news. Let's see what we got. Um, funny stuff coming out of uh, Russia again. Um, so you want to see something? I, dude, I don't even know what to call this. Uh, check this tweet out. When someone says Bronco, that reminds you of the OJ Chase. Yep. Is there there's a SpaceX live stream launch? No, there isn't. Someone is fooling you. The SpaceX launch is tomorrow. Um, so here, look at, look at this. This is the one web Soyuz that's on the pad right now. Dimitri tweeted that the launchers at Baikonur decided that without the flags of some countries, our rocket would look better. And literally taped footage and posted it on the internet of them taking other countries' flags or taping over other countries' flags. Wow. Taping over it with 3M tape. An American company. Yeah. Bro. Wow. That's uh it's pretty it's pretty petty. So, yeah. So check this out. Scott said and they had to use 3M adhesive panels, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. Yep, 3M. Yep. And then I said, 20 bucks on those coming off during the launch. Any takers? <laughs> Dude, that stuff's going to fly off. That'll tell you, oh, you taped up our flag. Oh, God. Dude, yeah, I mean. They specifically, yeah, they, yeah, Jim, can you believe that? They actually spent money putting photographers up there to make this and wasted time doing that okay <laughs> hey whatever helps you sleep at night man damn yeah I know tone deaf is frick I can't believe it Magellan I, I can't believe that dude you know it's kind of sad man because I, I like the Russian space program liked operative word yeah I mean it sucks but if they're gonna be like that dude like I don't know what to tell you come on man you're, you're acting like a freaking child 
They left India's flag, I think, Raven Guard. Um, yeah. All right. One word, propaganda. Yeah, but if you if you 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 give propaganda to the people. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, pretty much Neo, yeah. He could just say or do nothing. Yeah, Magellan, that, that, uh, just say, look, I'm, this sucks. I'm trying to make do with what I have, but nope, nope. Okay. That's the last of them satellites. Yep. I know. I, yeah, that's, dude, I, I really don't have anything else to say. I told you I'd update, I told you I'd update you guys on what's going on. I mean, guys throwing a freaking temper tantrum on Twitter. I, I'll be honest with you, dude. I thought he had a cooler head than that. Like I, I, that's my mistake because like I said, I've been telling you guys about the Russian program and trying to show that you know they know what's good for like a number of years now because they're our partner on the ISS but I mean over under on their new facility halting construction I don't think so I read that ours article about the budget stuff with SLS I assume you all covered that already I haven't covered it. I covered it yesterday, Hotbox. Yeah, I don't know, W. Hey, it is what it is, man. I mean, if that's... Like, I'm not going to have a petty response to that if that's what you want to do. I mean, but I know what he would say. He would say, oh, well, my hand is forced. I can't help. Like, yeah, okay, sure. The other day you made a comment about not covering the Chinese space program. I never realized you didn't cover them. Can you explain why you don't? They drop stages on people, Taco? Their first stages of their rockets launching out of Jin, Jinquan. They're hydrazine stages, and they land in villages. They don't talk about it, though. Zi, Xi, Xi Chang? Yeah. It's that one. Yeah, they launch over populated areas. Their own citizens' population areas. And stages fall, and... I end up always seeing footage of people walking up to the stage that has orange burning flames and orange clouds. People that probably filmed that are dead. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a problem with that. Yeah, I have a problem with that. And honestly, the only, the only, it sucks. I don't want to do it. Like, I'd like to cover the Chinese space program. I really, I really would like that, but I'm not going to do that. And now with the Russian stuff, I'm not going to do it either. The only, the only Russian space program stuff that I'm really going to cover is, uh, is anything that has to do with ISS operations or sanctions or whatever. Um, it kind of sucks, man. It kind of sucks. Like, I like the Russian program. I really do. I like what they, I like what it had going for it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see where it takes us now. If this Chinese space program stops dropping stages on people, will you cover them in the future? I mean, Tomas, it's pretty telling when you don't give a frick what, you don't give a frick about the, the, uh, it's pretty telling when you don't care about the, the well-being of your citizens, I mean, in your country, because, you know, I always say rockets that go up and come back down are missiles, not rockets. Those are the bad kind of rockets, you know? So, I don't know, Maybe. Anything news about any news about the ESA? Exo Mars is pretty much dead. Uh, that's not happening. Why would they do that? Thanks for explaining. Because they don't care. That's why I don't cover them. They don't. If they're not going to care about human life, which is tan like that's tantamount in space flight, I don't care about your space program. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Like I don't want to be a dick about this. Like I don't. I want to just cover everybody's space program because I honestly think that more rockets are better, but. 
you know, ethics, there are certain ethical things that kind of cross the line there, you know, and Russia pretty much, like, that's the thing, Russia didn't really cross the line, I just don't really appreciate how petty they're being, but whatever, it is what it is, it is what it is, man, they can choose to run their space program act however they want, I ain't covering their launches no more, I'm not doing that, <laughs> we can, they can, I don't want to do it, I'm not, I'm not going to, that's, and it sucks. It sucks that I had to come to this point. It sucks. But hey, it is what it is, dude. Yeah, Jim, I don't know, man. I really think I really think that if we had made the extra effort to help them get into Gateway, the Gateway program correctly, that maybe this stuff wouldn't be happening, dude. I can't help but think that in the back of my head. Now, I'll be honest, that's probably unlikely, but... It is what it is. You know, like, international cooperation is one of those things that helps safeguard the space program. No politician wants to be the person that gets rid of an international project because you're screwing up foreign relations doing that. That's why SLS has parts from the European space program and why Gateway is a partnership project and why the ISS has lasted so long because it's an international cooperation. It helps safeguard the, the well-being of a space program. Even with a stagnant market, it still helps, still helps, you know? But, uh, yeah, the, I can't see anything particularly good coming out of this for, for them. I mean, I, I honestly think our space program is going to be just fine because of SpaceX. Like, SpaceX is, co SpaceX is online and has been online for a number of years. Starliner's coming on, and then Dream Chaser, and then Cygnus, and then whatever Blue Origin's cooking up. All right, have fun, dude. I mean, yeah, have fun, bro. If that's if that's how you want to do this, like, but once again, like, guy's hand was kind of forced. There's really, he really doesn't have any choice. It is what it is, bro. I, I mean, I'm not doing that. How would that have been different than the ISS? If they're threatening to pull out of the ISS, there's little chance the Gateway would have continued either. No, I'm saying if we had fostered more cooperation, Jim, maybe this stuff, would, maybe they would have thought twice about doing something like this, but I don't know. So we lost ExoMars. ExoMars wasn't our program anyway. NASA pulled out of that a long time ago. Yeah, Jack, yeah, it ain't, it ain't personal, homie. Like, that sucks. I, I like, I, dude, I, I like Russia as a country. I think, I, I think, I, li I like that. I think they're cool, but not now, not right now. I like the Russian people. I don't like the government. Let me put it to you like that. Uh, but hey, it is what it is, dude. It is what it is, man. It sucks that it has to be this way. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to cover anything that has to do with them because this conversation comes up. You know, whatever, Nor. Just work with us. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'd love to see a man trip to Mars in your lifetime. Should happen. Yeah, Vasi, I know. And you're the one that helped me figure that one out, dude. Full of pretty, pretty freaking normal people from what I can tell, dude. Pretty normal, pretty normal people. Just want to be left alone. I can, I can empathize. I also want to just be left alone. Leave me alone. Just want to do my space thing. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I just want my space stuff. You know? <laughs> just just want just want to do space stuff. That's all. I floating, I, I'm familiar with the issue. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing a lot of reading about it. It's uh Yeah. Long story. So KSP time. No, it's time for space news. Uh, that's why I'm talking about this. How are we handling relief? Just fine. Yeah, everything is fine. Wasn't brought up once during Hearts, so I'm good with that. We're good on all the games that we play. Um, so I was just giving an update of what's going on with the space program. But um, uh, what what's going on with like sanctions in the space program? Guys, there there isn't much. There isn't much today. We got a Starlink launch happening tomorrow. Uh, what time is that happening? Let me, let me check rocketlaunch.live. Uh.
<laughs> oh, nice afternoon launch. Yeah, for you guys. Doxy, the thing we have not talked about is the mirror and the next gen vehicles. Those are gone. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, we do have a launch tomorrow. I'm going to be here for it. I'll see you guys at 9 tomorrow uh, for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Coming in hot with the early hours. Yep, super heavy, full cryo test footage. Yeah, there's always the Starship stuff. Um, I'm just, guys, I'm s scurrying around. I'm trying to find anything else. There really isn't anything. There's the flags being taped over, which is stupid. And... Oh, here we go. Here's something, here's an update about SLS. The first two 20 platforms surrounding NASA SLS and NASA Orion that allow work to be allow work on the integrated system inside of the VAB were retracted in press preparation for the rollout on March 17th. That's these two levels right here. Or no, it's already retracted. The one and two, it's halfway retracted in this picture. Here, let's take a look. See if we can get a nice close up here. Well, the top one is retracted, right? And then there's the next one right there. You can see the launch umbilical tower right there. The Orion service umbilical housing right there. Did you see this for Starship News? Uh, I have that teed up. I try to save Starship News to the end, Tomas. Did you see RGB's pictures of new Boca Foundations? I try to keep Starship stuff to the end of the Space News, fellas. But yeah, I, I have seen them. I have seen them. You know what's crazy? You can't even see the ground in this picture. This is way up at the top of the VAB. This picture is probably a good 500 feet up. 150 meters. Something like that. Probably a little bit more. Yeah, we're way up in the air here. Hey, you can't even see the you can't even see the deck of the ML. The bottom of the SLS rocket, like where it bolts to the, the mobile launcher, that's like, I don't know, 100 feet off the ground maybe. We're way up in the air. Yeah, really nice pictures. So they started retracting the decks here. That's really good though. That, that means we're getting ready to roll out. Now the door, the door for this is back there. If you see it, it's, it's, you can see the edge of the door. It slides upwards. And then this thing right here rolls that way. <laughs> 17th for the rollout. The good news from this crap fest is that the ESA might first push for crew capacity for Ariane 6 now, so we have redundancy. It's probably a good idea, Bouxy. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's the high bay bridge right there. That bridge is very high up off the ground. Yeah, see, here's the decks. This is where they do they do work. These are service gantries. And what they do is they work like a kitchen cabinet. They slide. They slide out of the way. This top one right here was for the launch escape system. Right here. This one is for Orion. That one's for the ICPS. This one's for the launch vehicle staging adapter. That one right there is for the LOX tank. This one is for the tops of the SRBs and the inner tank. I mean, dude, it looked, it just goes on and on and on and on. So what are the crews working on right now? Closeouts. Just closeouts, dude. I'd love to see these retract in real time. That would be really cool. Yep, there's, yeah, we're, dude, we're getting there. 
We're getting there. The VAB is an absolute beast. You know what? You know where this is going? It's going in my SLS research compilation. Yeah, we should see a rollout on the 17th, guys. So that's uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Yep, they're doing just closeouts. They're buttoning everything up, buttoning everything up. The vehicle is basically going to be in flight condition when it's when it goes when it goes out for the wet dress rehearsal, which is pretty awesome. Uh, no, no, I don't. I mean the research folder. Um, so, fellas, there was uh, there was folks talking about there was a whole budget meeting, and I talked about it yesterday. But just in case anybody didn't get it, um, there was a whole budget meeting yesterday where people were citing numbers about it, the SLS program and the Inspector General. And I'll be honest, fellas, I'm I'm usually one to say, you know, I don't know better. I don't know better. You know, like, you don't know better than NASA. You really don't. I'm not NASA. What do I know? But I'll be 100% real with you. Some of the numbers that were cited were blatantly cited incorrectly. Um, like, to the point where I'd be curious why you said it that way. You know what I mean? The way they were... The way they were talking about it, I went back and watched it yesterday. The way they were talking about SLS, they were saying, oh, it's not sustainable. It's $4.1 billion per launch. It's like, that's not really... It's not really how that works. Because the numbers changed since you saw it? No, they didn't. The numbers still add up. Because COVID and stuff? No. They... The, in the NASA Inspector General yesterday was like, SLS really isn't sustainable, there's no plan, blah, 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 blah. It's like... He, he, the guy cited that it was $4.1 billion per launch. We, we understand, and I understand what he's saying, but also at the same time, because of how NASA does their calculations, that's all the development for the entire program roped into launch cost. I looked at it, and I'm not going to say that it's nefarious in intent, but that's a really stupid way to look at that. Um, and I don't mean to be mean, and I'm not trying to hear, sit here and imply that I know better. I'm just really curious as to why you'd say that. Why you'd say it like that. Why would you say that? Because the reality of the situation is, is that SLS is no more expensive than any other rocket. Yeah, sure, there are probably there's probably some waste here and there. What what project doesn't doesn't have that? I'm pretty sure SN15 and 16 at the, that are sitting at Starbase are waste. Well, maybe not 15, 16, 22, booster five. That's all waste. But we don't hear about that because SpaceX is a private company. They don't have to disclose their cost to the taxpayer. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think SpaceX probably can do it for cheaper because it's a very well-regulated program, obviously. But what I don't think is, you know, NASA using these numbers and saying, you know, oh, it's $4.1 billion per launch, that's not very sustainable. Well, yeah, of course it's not sustainable. You're roping development costs into... With the way that with the way that the investigator general was calculating numbers, from what I understand, he was roping development costs in for the first four launches. So that was basically all the time it took to develop and engineer the rocket. You're roping that into your launch costs, which is not even how. That's. That's, that's not it. NASA doesn't even. Like they do do that, but that's a that's not the way that you look at it. Like, and what do I mean when that's not the way that you look at it? You you have development, and you have a certain amount of money that you got to put into your space program before you launch a rocket, right? That's just got to spend money if you want the thing to work, right? The missions have been projected in the past at one billion dollars a pop from the inspector inspector general themselves. And then all of a sudden he pulls this $4 billion figure out of his tail. Oh, it's going to be $4.1 $4 billion per launch. $4.1 billion per launch. And I'm sitting there going, no, it's not. So I went and looked. I went and looked why what those numbers are based off of. Those numbers are roping everything. Everything. That's, that's anything and everything that was spent on the SLS program over the past 10 years. Into the launch cost, which is a... Look... 
I'm not one to point fingers. I don't like blaming people. That's really stupid. You take accountability for yourself, right? But also at the same time, that's a really crappy way to do that. You wouldn't say that that way unless you wanted to prove a point. I'm not sure what point is trying to be proven here. Sending someone to the moon is an expensive endeavor. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It's a very strange thing to do. And once again, I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to be, oh, $30 billion. You guys have heard that before. I just don't really understand why you would say that that way unless you had an axe to grind. Like, and I'm, once again, I'm not trying to suggest anything bad or anything. I, I, I'm just, I'd really like to ask that guy, why did you compound the costs that way? That's not even how NASA compounds their cost. They, they don't do that that way. But and here, I, I did a little bit more research last night. Uh, I did a little bit more research and I just kind of crunched some numbers around my head, just some napkin math. Even if you decide to rope development costs into price per launch, so this is some kind of basic economic stuff. Even if you do that, it's still, it still is not expensive. That's the math still checks out, which is very weird. That's very strange. It's a very strange thing to. That's a very strange thing to say. So why does the whole development cost? So why does the whole development cost ninety three billion since twenty twelve? That should be twenty three billion per launch that way. So how does that work? Well, well, Bouncy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm talking about exploration systems development. That's the cost that they specifically, once again, they selectively roped stuff in, which is really stupid. You're selectively coming up with the price because you're right. That's something that I looked into. And this, this is kind of where I was going with this. Uh, you're right, because the whole program has been 93 billion since 2012, right? They roped in the systems development into the launch, and that's it. That the other billions of dollars is for all the test stands, the VAB, everything else. Because any NASA program that uses a NASA facility has to foot the, the utility bill. And that's where that other cost comes from, keeping the lights on in the VAB, and keeping the lights on at KSC, and keeping the lights on at Stennis, and Michoud, and uh, Marshall. Uh, and Ames for like wind tunnel testing and, and Glenn for vacuum testing. It's very weird, dude. It's a very weird way to say that. Because you're right. Like, why would you specifically say that that way? I, guys, I'm convinced that if we compared PPL, so price per launch as opposed to total cost involved, which is how NASA, NASA just fig factors the whole cost in, right? If you did price per launch, SLS is probably about four or five hundred million per launch, I'd have to say. Now that's not bad considering what you get. And I always said, now Bouxy, I know you disagreed with me on this one, but I always said that the infrastructure that they're laying now is designed for scalability. I, I still firmly believe that. Um, uh, they, you don't build a factory and not intend to ramp up production, you know, just in case like why wouldn't you it's something it's just uh, that's what industrial engineering is you'd always want to build a little bit more than what you think it's going to build just in case so like um i don't uh, i lost my train of thought i'm more worried about this than anything um so i Oh yeah, SLS cost. I, I think that SLS is going to cost about four or five hundred million dollars per stack per mission. I mean, and if you if you you know they built scalability into the factory, so if they did it more, that price would go down. Like if you launched one SLS every month, that it could go down to like a hundred million a pop, easily. Uh, price goes down in bulk because it doesn't matter if you're making one or ten. You have to build the same factory. So. I, I just don't really understand why they would rope prices like that and specifically make it a point to mention roping development costs into the SLS program, into the first four launches, and, and and do it just like that and not make it a thing to say the context in what those numbers are come up with, or how those numbers are come up with. If we're going to rope the development costs of SLS into the first four launches, yeah, of course it's going to be, of course it's going to be expensive. Yeah, but that means that the more you launch it, the more that price goes down. Thus, price per launch goes down over time. Simple economics. Why would you say that and not make it a thing to mention the next thing? That's, that's what I mean. That's very, like, once again, I'm not, 
I don't really like going against the grain with NASA because usually I don't know better. That's why I don't do it. But that one doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't know why you'd say that like that. That's very weird. Yeah, Ice King, it's been $2 billion per launch, but the way, that's what I'm telling you. It's been $2 billion a launch, right? And now all of a sudden he pulls this $4 billion a launch thing out of his, out of his tailpipe and says that in a, in a freaking uh, a congressional meeting, cites that number just out of the blue, right? Based off of a completely different pricing system than what they've said in the past. They just changed the pricing system? What? Why would you do that? Why would you? See what I'm talking about? That doesn't really make a whole lick of sense. Why do they have to do that when, why can't, why can't they just give us a true number of how much it costs? Well, goalie, they ha they do. They do give you the they do give you the true number. They have to by law, which is why, uh, wh that's what I'm saying, dude. They have to give you the number. We already know the number. So why are you making up a different cost scale? What is the purpose there? And once again, this isn't like oh, there's some nefarious thing going on. No, I, when I say when I say I don't understand it, I mean I don't understand why you would quote out the price that way and then mention it in a congressional meeting. Why would you do that? Why would you change your cost scale completely? That doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's weird, dude. It, it's very, it's very strange. That's very, that's very strange. But anyway, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't really think there's any much more to say. I think SLS should fly and I think it should fly more. If it flies more, that price goes down. So at least we, at least we recoup some of the investment. And no, it's not sunk cost because there's a re vehicle ready to go literally sitting in the VAB right now. That's not sunk cost at all. Did Bill say this? No, NASA inspector, the NASA investigator general, or inspector general said this in a congressional meeting yesterday. It's very strange. I, yeah, here, let's see what, let's see what we got here. We're more worried about this. We saw poor contractor performance by Boeing on SLS. The cost plus contracts for SLS Orion worked to the contractor's advantage, not NASA. <laughs> Last, please. Also, lobbyists? What? Would they lobby for the program to go less? I don't know. You, you shouldn't lobby the investigator general. I'm pretty sure that pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. Uh, Vickers, I do not see your last anywhere if you do. Oh, there it is. All right. All right. Hold on. Wasn't anyone able to provide a rebuttal on his claims, buddy? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that most of the press ran away with it and said, Herder, SLS too expensive. Not not doing any one iota of critical thinking about the subject. Uh, anything that anything that agrees with my narrative, I'm just going to report and not, not do any thinking about. Because, you know, that's smart. That's a smart thing to do, right? Oh, wait. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's very, very peculiar. Don't understand that one. Um, uh, so, fellas, okay. Regarding this... We saw poor, pro poor contractor performance by Boeing on the SLS. The cost plus contracts for SLS Orion work to the contractor's advantage and not NASA. I agree. I agree with that. That's right. Do you know why? Who knows? Who knows what I'm going to say? You guys know. I know you guys. I know you guys know. I know you know it. I know you know the answer. That's right. Big Zig, you got it. If you tell a contractor to build a rocket... Hey, Boeing, Just we need you to make us a super heavy launch vehicle. Boeing goes, oh, sure, I'd love to do that. Absolutely. Okay. How many, like, what, what are we going to do with this rocket? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. Yeah, we, we, we might go to an asteroid or something or, like, maybe, you know, like, go back to the moon. So you want me to build a rocket that might go back to the moon? Yeah. Yeah. O okay. When do you need this by? Um, like 10 years. What? Yeah, like, yeah, you know, 10 years, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yeah, 10 years, 10 years. So you want me to build you a rocket that has no mission, that we don't know where it's going, and you want it in 10 years. Yeah, and then, you know, we'll basically just give you a blank check to just make sure that you design it to basically do anything in case we want to do something else with it. Oh. <laughs> really? That's what you want? 
Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good, right? Like, that's a good contract. That's fair, right? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's fair, NASA. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Boeing. All right. <laughs> did you guys hear that? Yeah, we did. They're going to give us a blank check to build a rocket that does nothing. See what I mean? So you could say that, oh, Boeing is Boeing has poor performance. Well, you have no deadline for them. Of course they have poor performance. And get I get it. Let's harp on Boeing. That's the cool and hip thing to do, right? Yeah, let's do that. What about Lockheed with Orion? What about Lockheed? What about Aerojet Rocketdyne with the boosters? Same argument could be made. So it's not just Boeing. This is what happens when you tell contractors to do a pro build. I want you to build me a factory for a rocket, and I don't know when it's going to be needed, and I don't know what it's going to do. Okay, I want a billion dollars up front. Because I'm not going to build you a factory and then have it do nothing. We're not going to fire, fire our workforce, are we? See what I'm talking about? It doesn't make any sense. You can't... You, like, and this is what I mean about the Inspector, Inspector General. Oh, poor contractor performance from Boeing. What about Lockheed? Orion has taken just as long. I don't understand. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to I'm trying to piss and Lockheed and Boeing's cornflakes. I, I, I think it's really stupid when people do that. What what I think is really dumb is, you know, giving these commercial contractors basically a blank check to make something that you don't even know what you wanted to do yet. Of course you're gonna have poor performance. This is not rocket style. Oh yeah, it is. See what I mean? You know, they're like, oh, good. So, okay, let me let me give you another example. So why did, would you do cost plus contracting then for a rocket? That doesn't make any sense. Well, you do cost plus contracting when you, you, you want scalability in your rocket. When you want to build a rocket that goes to Mars as a, or goes to the moon as a baseline configuration, and then maybe down the road make upgrades to go to Mars. Cost plus contracting has been employed many times where you're not exactly sure what you need to make to achieve your result. It's true. Uh, there's been a lot of programs that were cost plus in the past. The B1, B1 was cost plus, B2 cost plus. Those, those, those did, those programs did some very good work. Uh, Saturn V, yeah, the Apollo program that was cost plus for development, and then we paid billions of dollars to develop a vehicle and then used it like 13 or 14 times. That's good. We got our money's worth there, didn't we? See what I mean? Like that, you if you don't give them a, if you don't give them a set schedule, a set deadline, and ex, you know say we need you to do this. This rocket needs to be able to get an Orion capsule and 25 tons of payload to low lunar orbit so we can build the lander later, right? You need to do this, and we need to do this by this date. Done. Okay, cool. That's when a cost plus contract works to your advantage because that means you have the you have the monetary flexibility to be able to get it done in time. But, you know, they, the, these folks sit here, the Inspector General of NASA sits here and says that, oh, there's poor performance from Boeing and doesn't explain why. Why wouldn't you explain that? I, I, it seems like you're, you're leaving out a very critical detail there. OIG did comment on, the, on Lockheed Martin how NASA gave them excellent performance while they were incurring delays and overruns. So the problem isn't poor performance then, is it? <laughs> Guys, look, I know that people aren't going to like this. I know that people don't want to hear this. Boeing and Lockheed and Northrop Grumman, that's not the problem here. If NASA doesn't hold them accountable to the contracts that they put out, of course they're going to abuse it. Like, you need somebody to put foot to tail, you know, to curtail costs. You can't just decide this stuff via a committee. And part of that is having a set deadline and a set goal. That's the reason why I was so bummed out when they said we're not going back to the moon in 2024 because I saw the writing on the wall. I knew what was coming next. I knew that crap like this was coming. If you want their full written comment to Congress before the meeting, I watched the YouTube video, Hell Hydra. It, I, dude, in all my years, man, and like, I don't, I don't want to sit here and say that I know better. I don't. 
But also at the same time, I really, really, really would appreciate as a taxpayer an explanation as to why you're citing costs this way and why you explain things the way that you did. They went out of their way to explain stuff in a very, very weird way. Am, am I wrong in thinking that, dude? <clears throat> Yeah, dot com. Something like that, right? On the flip side, no set deadlines or requirements that constantly change makes the contractor look bad. And we have changed what SLS has done multiple times throughout its career, Dead Crew, haven't we? Oh, boy. Yeah, this was yesterday, Ice King. One Starship orbital flight test. Spring? I don't know, man. That valve, that valve problem was a very strange issue, Sebi, but... It, Unfortunately, it's something that you need to figure out. And once again, I don't think this reflects on Boeing at all. It, the Starliner thing is just... Dude, you know that... Uh, you know that scene from uh, TNG? You could do everything right and still lose. That's life. Deal with it. Dude, I, th that's that's what happened with Starliner. Nitric acid corrosion in a valve that has 30, uh, that has 30 years of research behind it is very strange it's very anonymous behavior um and i guarantee you it's not from the design that's some that's a, that's an external force affecting the valve yeah exactly fuzz you could do everything right and you could still get it wrong and you could still lose that's life freaking deal with it not at all since before these sort of meetings the people submit written statements so that is why things seem weird yeah yeah, hell, I'd like. I know that you guys look into this stuff too. I, and once again, I don't want to sit here and claim proclaim that I know more than the investigator general. So, uh, I I really like. If it's one thing that I've noticed, it's that Chad is very good at being contrarian. If you're typing no, 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 we're not right now. Yeah, you proved my point. Thank you. Three times over. Um, Chad is very good at being contrarian, so it's really easy. Like I always make sure that like, am I am I on the right track here? Hmm, perhaps. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, I know. No, you're not. Wait. So, y you know, like... Yeah, it's very... That's very weird, man. That's a very weird thing going on. I don't, I don't understand what this... Like, the $4.1 billion came from this report, and what, what used to... And what was used to come up with it. Yeah, okay, here. I'll show you. Let, let, you know, let's dive in. Just you know, just so I can double check myself. All right. A broad year-long oversight has identified several interrelated challenges NASA must address to achieve its ambitious Artemis goals. Including unsustainable costs, a lack of including unsustainable costs, a lack of transparency into funding requirements. They literally have to say how much they're spending to you. Wrong link. Uh oh, okay. All right, so what is the, wait, what is this one? What's the difference between that and this one? That's the, that's the congressional testimony. So this is, this is what I read, Hell Hydra. What is this one? Page 23. Let me, let me just take a look. Uh, I, I'm just interested to make sure that my finger's on the pulse. Let's see. Artemis cost breakdown in budget projection through fiscal year 2025. As of August 2021, dollars in millions. Okay. Hi. Hey, Brimo. 
A-R-S Mars! How are you? I'm good. I just wanted to come in and say hi. Hi! I love you. I love you too. Hey, you know what? I'll ask you. Why would NASA change their cost scale all of a sudden? They literally changed the way they tally expenses and then reported that as a congressional testimony. Why would they do that? I don't know. Yeah, it's very strange. I got nothing, baby. Yeah, it's, it's very weird. Because what they did was they changed their cost scales all of a sudden of how they like grade out prices. And then they presented that in a congressional testimony citing like SLS at like $4 billion a pop because they changed how they would calculate costs for some reason. And everyone ran away with Herder SLS $4.1 billion a launch. So I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I heard almost zero of what you said because my mind is on the thing I was trying to fix earlier. Yeah, maybe you should go do that. Yeah, I should. I should. Blah, 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 you want to, I mean, I'll, I'll go. All right, let's take a look. Fiscal year 2012 through 20, it's 40 billion right there. 2021 is nine, 10, 10, 10, 11. So did, we did go through this PDF on stream when it came out, but only we only looked at the figures. Yeah, I don't remember doing that. So, where are they getting $4.1 billion per year for a launch? Where, are they compounding Orion, SLS, and EGS? Yes, they are. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why would you... <laughs> The $4.1 billion total cost represents the production of the rocket and the operations needed to launch the SLS Orion system and against the labor facilities overhead, but does not include any money spent either on prior development of the system for the next generation technologies such as the EUS. Watch EJ's whole argument collapse in real time. No, no it doesn't. That doesn't it doesn't collapse in real time because they they changed their cost they changed their cost structuring. You literally they they literally said that this was the price for SLS. This was the price for SLS. This was the price for SLS. Now it's the whole kit and caboodle, huh? Why would someone say this like this unless they were will unless they were trying to slant something? It 
not include any money spent either on prior development of the system or the next generation technology such as SLS's EUS, Orion's docking system, or Mobile Launcher 2. Figure 7 provides a break out of the operating cost for launch of the... This math checks out. Yeah, everything checks out here from what I can tell. Yeah, okay. We're just dealing with total cost involved again. All right. Discovery, go at throttle up. It's just a total cost for Artemis. It's not going to look good. Y yeah, it's just total cost. I don't... Why would you say that and then say it's insustainable? It's not insustainable. I don't... I don't... Am I missing something? Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Alleviate. So glad to be subbed to you. Great way to unwind after a stressful day. Okay. Hey, Jackery, how you doing? Hope all is well. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah, JuicePot, that's very... St Once again, why would you say that? Why would you say that it's insustainable? It's not insustainable. You just don't know how to look at costs correctly. I think politics is starting to get involved here. N no, nothing. No, no, Bandit, you're just not thinking about it correctly. Yeah, no, it's not. Politics aren't starting to get involved here. Uh, seriously, because these numbers are right. They're they're correct. They're correct. Take a look. I'll show you. Look, projected cost. Look at the cost. It goes down by four hundred million dollars over four four years for Orion, and then it goes down by three hundred million dollars. For SLS. And this is only if you do one launch a year. If they ramp this up to two launches a year, this price halves. These numbers make sense. They make perfect sense. Why would you call this insustainable? It's not insustainable. Like, what do you mean insustainable? What the hell does that even mean? You're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna do this for cheaper. <laughs> and what you say, but but EJ, one billion dollars that's a lot of money. To sit here and imply that SpaceX isn't spending billions of dollars on Starship is completely ridiculous. Uh, that's ridiculous. They're literally building multiple launch pads right now. They're building multiple launch pads, two oil rigs, research and development for the most complicated vehicle ever made, and on top of that, sustaining the Falcon 9 program. To not imply that they're spending billions of dollars and that their, their price points don't look something like this is ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that it's equal cost or even more expensive. SpaceX is probably cheaper, but it's it's not that much cheaper than one might think. It's really not. It's the, the way this talks is like saying, well, Falcon 9 costs $60 million a pop to launch people into space. That's incorrect. By NASA's own criteria, launching a Dragon 2 per the commercial crew program costs upwards $150 million bucks. And guess what? That's right in line with space shuttle prices, guys. I hate to break it to you. It really is. Sorry. It is still a little less expensive, but it's right in line with the capability. I've said this a bajillion times. So to say that this is insustainable is notoriously short-sighted. That's ridiculous. I can't believe that. I can't believe that the inspector, the inspector general would go in front of a Congress and call this insustainable. I can't believe that. That's the... Oh, insustainable for what? For what, the science involved? Maybe, maybe, you know, let's give the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe, maybe the guy's saying that, you know, you need to launch more. I don't know. 
Do you think he's trying to get people mad and maybe sit here and maybe we need to launch a lot more than one a year? I think I think we do, goalie. We need to launch <laughs> one launch every year is. <laughs> I was about to say that's that is insustainable, and you know what? That makes sense. That's probably what he's saying, dude. That's probably it. So what? What's the deal? Launch more? Do we launch more? Do we launch less? What do we do? How much on the table? How much on that table is going to SpaceX's contract? Uh, this is for the Artemis program, so not, none of these numbers on the table goes to SpaceX. N none of them. EJ, wouldn't we be making the claim that it's insustainable? Wouldn't it, making the claim that it's insustainable be making the assumption that they'd be launching brand new Orions every time and setting up a new gateway every few years? I don't think so, Abadoxin. Unless I'm reading it wrong. I don't think that that's the case, merely be because why would you do that? Orions are reusable. How much do you think SpaceX is paying? Guys, uh, so Alleviate, I want to be very clear here, all right? I want to be very clear. I'm not some crazy SLS fanboy, okay? I think SpaceX is a much cheaper solution. But it's not as, it's not factors cheaper than, it, it's not like that much cheaper than what people think. People think that SpaceX can do it for like half the price. That's not true. That's not true. Now, don't get me wrong. Doing it for like 80% of what NASA is, yes, that's saving billions of dollars. And that's the argument to be made. I understand both sides of this argument. And I, I still want Starship to succeed. It, you know, it, I, I still do. I'm not, I'm not some, like, just SLS shill here. I, I hope Starship eats SLS lunch, if you really want my honest opinion. I really do. That way, they, they'll pull their head out of their tail and be like, oh, we got to launch it more. <laughs> you know? It, this is HLS data? It's overall SLS data, Masi, which is very, very strange. Where can I watch the full broadcast on Atlas V? Uh, I can get that for you. Uh, here's the full cast. Right there. They're making the same mistakes as before IMO. They add the cost of having the space program into the cost of a single rocket. Yeah, you need the support structures. And all you have to pay for the, but that's not the pure cost of the rocket. You'll need to pay it anyway if you want a space program. That Crownless, that's what I'm trying, yes, exactly. That's probably a more eloquent way to say what I'm trying to say. Guys, this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's SLS. We could remake the Saturn V and these numbers would look pretty damn similar. I'm dead serious about that. Uh, it's, that's just, that's just how it works, man. Like. It's, it's expensive sending someone to the moon. It's expensive if you rope if, with total cost involved. The only way that that gets less expensive over time is if you do it more. That's it, that's the only way. It's always gonna cost a lot of money. So one of the reasons the OIG is saying it's unsustainable is that the entire SLS program is single use, so shrug. And the $4.1 billion per launch is only accounting for Artemis 1 through 4, which Orion is single use since the first reuse is planned for 5. That literally makes no sense, Hell Hydra. That makes no sense. That, that, that makes no sense, dude. Am I going crazy? Oh my goodness. That's literally the stupidest way to look at that. That... That is some bottom feeder tier. Dude, that's like fifth graders looking at economics. My head hurts. My head hurts, bros. I, I don't know. My, my head hurts. Yeah, of course, goalie. Governments have to, the government program has to exist, man. Because moving stuff into space is a logistical cost, like the post office. Why does the post office exist if UPS exists? All right, they exist because they offer services. They're not there to make money, all right? They offer services that UPS doesn't, like passport photos or a P.O. box or, well, UPS has P.O. boxes or getting stamps and stuff. Like, there's there's services that the post office does that UPS and FedEx don't do. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Or rural delivery, Bingo. And moving the mail is no different than moving payloads or people into space. NASA needs to exist with their own in-house space program, man. That is the only sustainable way we go forward. Do you want a corporation having the only, being the only one that 
being the only way that gets to, that can get to the moon. I don't want that. I don't want a government being the only way they can get to the moon either. I want both of them. That's the most sustainable way forward. Yeah, CW. Yeah. It seems that this is not complete there after me go to the stream ends, but I would like to see all the work on removing the satellite. They didn't show satellite deploy, Ilya. Uh, I didn't see it. If you want to check the VOD from yesterday, I streamed it, but yeah. Okay, Hell Hydra, what am I looking at here? Top of page three for the full reasoning. Non spark nose reasons, and trust me, I didn't leave much out. All right. Moreover, our detailed examination of the Artemis program contracts found its cost unsustainable. Given our estimate of a $4.1 billion a year, okay, mm hmm. $4.1 billion a year, NASA must, NASA must accelerate its efforts to identify ways to make Artemis-related programs more affordable. Otherwise, relying on such expensive, single-use, heavy-lift rocket systems will, in our, in our judgment, yeah, very much so in your judgment, inhibit, if not derail, NASA's ability to sustain its long-term human exploration goals of the Moon and Mars. Have these people ever... Dude, okay, maybe I'm just losing my patience. Hellhydra, why do I get the impression here that these people have never read a cost-benefit analysis? Do these people even know what that means? Do we know what that... Do we know what that means? Like, I'd be very curious to ask. I'd be like, do, do, what do you... Let me do some research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing the dirty work, man. I really appreciate it. Because I want to get to the bottom of this, dude. There's got to be a reason why they're saying this this way. That's a... And I'm, I'm hoping... I'm giving the benefit of the doubt here. I'm hoping it's to show them that you've got to launch more, not less. But that's the thing. It's very easy to look at this and think the opposite of that. Not Don't launch at all. There's no return on investment, Edmund. That's the thing. It's NASA. Your investment is science. There's no ROI. So how can you t how do you know if it's unsustainable? How how do you know what's unsustainable? There's no market for this. The sustainability is comes from market uh, analysis of market economics. There's no market for this. So how is it unsustainable? I'm confused. Am I stupid? Like, I'm I'm actually asking. Am I am I going crazy? There's I gotta I must I must miss something, dude. I must have missed something. In addition, the agency has seen significant cost growth in the mobile launcher spacesuit and to a lesser degree, the gateway. Yeah. Okay. However, since NASA is following its commercial crew model in the HLS procurement, cost increases may be controlled in part due to a fixed price milestone based contracts where SpaceX, the contractor, shares cost of the development. Guess his degree? I, I don't know. Interpretive basket weaving, dude. I, I believe that after what I've read here. He has a degree in journal. Anyway, what I miss? That my face. It hurts. Why?
He holds a BA in journalism from Penn State. Oh, dear. I don't know, James. Yeah, no, I... I got nothing to say. I, I, I totally stretch it. Yeah, I needed to stretch the lungs. I. Sebi, what's your last? I'm sorry, I, I blacked out over the last five minutes. What happened? I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, Sammy. I don't, I, that's depressing. <laughs> that's, that's freaking depressing, dude. Why? Why? No, no, floating. You don't understand. This is good news because the person that's literally doing investigative general investigative general work when it comes to analyzing the costs of, of NASA, literally is not an economist, has no degree pertaining to economics in any way. Yeah, so that actually makes me feel better because I'm not going crazy. My Discovery, no my judgment is still spot on. You, you can't say something is unsustainable when there's no market to drive, when there's no market to drive the price. That's literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I can't say that my F-250 costs through thirty thousand dollars, if there was, if it was the only F two fifty in the world, how do you know? How do you know what this costs? That that it, th th this person does not understand economics. Th no, that actually makes me feel really nice. Actually, hail Hydra. Yeah. Oh, you got gifted a sub from Chris. That actually makes me feel really good because that shows that this person literally has no idea what they're talking about. That's really cool. All right, cool. Uh, your boy still got it. Judge, he's got a journalism degree, dude. Been, uh, it's only rocket science. The Eagle has landed. You, you turned 21 yesterday, took a shot of water, and almost choked. This alcohol thing is hard. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think you're focusing on the journalism thing way too much. Uh, no, no, Pythos. You, so you can't, dude. You came in on the end of this. You came in on the tail end of this, dude. I'm telling you, you'd be livid if you went, you'd be livid if you were here through this whole conversation, brother. Trust me on this one. This person. This person did a report about the economics, the macroeconomics of the SLS program and cited and had the nerve to cite insustainability as the uh, as uh, as a risk, like not a risk as a um uh what's the right word? What's the right way to say it? He, he cited ins instability as one of the problems facing the un the Artemis program. What's how can you, how can you say that? You you have nothing to gauge it against. How is it unsustainable? You see what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> if not, I'm gonna give this up to Krakenbot. Pythos, it, it, it still it, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? A jurist doctor is very much in line with being an investigator general. Well, 
I mean, maybe, maybe the guy's good at investigating, but sure ain't good at crunching numbers. Let me put it to you like that. Inspector Job for Job is investigating things like fraud, waste, and abuse. They have experts that give them analysis, and they make judgment. And they make the judgment based off of that opinion. Yeah, I, I really would. I, Pythos, dude, trust me. He, dude, go and read it. Go and read it. It makes no sense. This makes no sense. What expert analysis? Who did you talk to about this? I'm really, I'm really genuinely curious. Yes, I'm willing to push the envelope that much. Who did you talk? What expert analysis did you get? How do, how can you like the, the, their whole claim, dude, is that the SLS is insustainable? How? What? What? Against what? What is it insustainable to go back to the moon? Should we just not go back to the moon? Yeah, how's it unsustainable? It hasn't even launched yet. How can you even come up with that figure? How can you even say that? By that definition, the Apollo program was insustainable, and the numbers prove that it wasn't. What was insustainable was canceling it after after uh, going to the moon a number of times. That was, if anything, that was a waste of money. Not Not actually building the vehicle to get there. Because all those facilities that you, you used to, to make the Saturn V and everything kind of just did nothing after that. They made, you know, the shuttles and that's it. Like, insustainable is in we don't get our money back on this program, but that is a given on many government programs. It's about doing a service in science and not returning money. Yeah, Crownless, that's what I don't understand. How can you, how can you, how can you say something is unsustainable when A, we haven't done it in 50 years. So there's no cost analysis that could pertain to this because you're talking about the Apollo program, which is fundamentally set up with a different cost and contracting structure because the lander is commercially contracted out, for instance, right? So if you can't use Apollo as a sustainable avenue, which SLS is like an order of magnitude cheaper than Apollo, even adjusted for inflation, what are you using as your metric here? There's no metric. You're just making it up. You, you, oh, in our judgment. What, what judgment? What, ana what, what expert analysis did you talk to? The guy had the balls to go and tell this to Congress, saying that he thinks a program is unsustainable because he thinks it's unsustainable. Well, guess what? I think it's sustainable. Should I go tell Congress that? If I can't prove it, then what's the point? Why are you talking to Congress at all? That's very frustrating, man. It's very frustrating. How are other rocket sustainables? NASA going to make money on the missions? That, salty, that, exactly. You can apply... That, that's the point that I'm trying to get at, guys. You can apply that crap mentality to any government program. Anything. You can apply it to NASA. You can apply it to Social Security. You can apply it to healthcare. You can apply it to Medicare, Medicaid. You can apply... You could say that is... You could say that about anything. But it's even... It doesn't even make more sense, like, with NASA, because you have nothing to gauge it against. At least with, like... With, with other things like uh, like defense Jerry, spending, you no can you can measure against other fighter jets. You know uh, about how sustainable a certain program is, and even then, they still really don't care. They just do it anyway, right? Like, there's nothing to measure against. You have no metric for sustainability because no one's standing on the moon right now. He thinks there's unsustainable, but there's no money coming back. Is that a given? Yeah. Well, Crownless, like I said. You can make that same argument with climate monitoring satellites. There's no money coming back from monitoring, from making more, from Sentinel-6 satellite. We don't make money off that. So should we not do it? That's literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That, that, that's really dumb. Like, and I'm not saying we should, get, we should get rid of climate things. Like, it sounds stupid when you say it about climate stuff, but somehow it doesn't sound stupid when you say it about SLS. That makes no sense. The whole, the whole case, the whole case is is based off of a predication. Now, see, you know where my mind goes here. You know where my mind goes from here. How many, how many other things around NASA, around the Investigator General, have been predicated off of something as flimsy as that? Sustainability. Got a sub from Predominant. Thank you. Like, am I going crazy, dude? Like. I don't understand. 
That's not about isn't about making money. It's about paving the way for creating a market, making space sustainable for others. So how are you going to do that if you don't want to foot a bill to be the one that makes a rocket that goes back to the moon? Wow. Well, I've heard some really stupid things being said in the past, but that one probably takes the cake. You should write an argumentative letter. Discovery, go I'm about to go in co I'm about to go in front of Congress myself, Sanchai. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I'd get there. But th this is this is absolutely absurd. It's a market way of thinking applied to a government program that just doesn't work. Yeah. It, doing nothing in space is very sustainable. Other actions are ultimately unsustainable in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. T three. I, I, yeah, you're right, dude. That's see, this is what I'm trying to get, man. I knew that. I knew those numbers didn't sit right in my head, but I couldn't figure out why. He says it's not sustainable because there is a lack of information to make an informed decision on sustainability. So, but TJ, isn't that an in conclusion? Why would you rule in favor of unsustainability if you can't tell if it's sustainable? This is an honest question. Like, uh, I'm not trying to be rhetorical. I'm actually trying to. I'm trying to turn the gears here. Why? That doesn't. It still doesn't make sense. Yeah, Wisp, that's what I mean. You can't say that something's sustainable or not when you never define what sustainability is. This is dude, this is clown shoes. This is clown shoes. We're getting nowhere. This is this is clown shoes. It's clown shoes, man. Well, what are you doing? What is this, amateur hour? Do you know what... Do you even know it? Do you know anything about space flight? You know, I'm just gonna... Just gonna go ask a bunch of people for some stuff and... Here's your numbers. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. I have to be, dude. There's no way this is this stupid. There's no way. NASA doesn't work like this. I'm telling you. There, there's no way. I gotta be missing something. And this is gonna bother me for the rest of the night, dude. Yeah, Celtic, nobody brings that up about James Webb or Apollo or Sat. Well, they, they did bring it up, and that was their justification for canceling the Apollo program, which... Hey, guys, guess what? That was dumb. Yeah, that was, that was, that was, a, bull, that was a bull crap justification. Yeah. Like you said, purpose. Like you said, purpose. Can't and doesn't be measured in dollars. Yeah. It's, oh, my gosh. Gas-powered cars are unsustainable. Guess we should park them every go to be back to driving a horse and buggy. Look, man. Yeah, no, yeah, no, dude. I don't get it. I don't get it. Metroid, I, I will never, ever, ever default to pointing the finger at somebody. The reason why is because that's self that's self fulfilling. If I sit here and say this guy is a SpaceX shill, how 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 does that help my argument? It doesn't help my argument at all. I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to investigate this, just the way that this clown would do the same thing. I want to investigate. I want to investigate your investigation, because guess what? You we did. We just spent an hour doing it, and your investigation literally makes no sense. It's predicated on an opinion, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. The fact that somebody had the, the fact that somebody packaged this up and then submitted it as testimony to Congress is very concerning. That's that's very concerning. Wow.
Thank you for all the gifted subs, by the way. Crownless, but do they? Do they? Do they not get that, you know, p putting money into this is going to get valuable science and data back and creates good paying jobs in multiple congressional districts and that's the return on investment? Like, do, do, do they really get it? Because I'm, I'm starting I'm starting to doubt it. Yeah, Sanchai C-SPAN. There's everything that Congress does is usually publicly live streamed and anyone can watch it anywhere in the world, dude. Yeah, C-SPAN. I don't know if you have something like that over there. Yeah, Celtic. This is ridiculous, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. I, I like, and I'm not trying to, to quell dissenting opinion, you guys. If anybody, if, dude, I don't want an echo chamber. Like Pythos brought up a good point that a journalism major is an investigative journalism major is is good for the investigator general. That makes sense. I understand that. That makes perfect sense. Like at least so at least that's not the problem there. That's what they that's that's the right that's the right degree for that position. And I, I, Pythos probably he probably left. <laughs> but uh Oh, you're still here. Your job is to find the experts to give you the analysis to put things together. I just don't get it, brother. That's just a dude. Because you could make that same argument about anything. Like, I, I'll give you an example. Streaming. When I started streaming, my parents always told me it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You can't make a living off this. It's not sustainable. And even when I showed them a paycheck, they're like, okay, do it, but it's not sustainable. It's not, you're not going to be doing this forever. It's not sustainable. Yeah, well, uh, seven years later, still doing it. I have, but you w we didn't know. You d I didn't know if streaming was sustainable when I went in full time. I didn't even think that. But here we are, seven years later almost, and I'm still doing it. I'm still making money off of it. Like, because I have metrics to show this. You can't tell if it was sustainable or not when th the day that I went full time. There's no possible way to predict that. No one's arguing, Laser Man. We're trying to figure stuff out. No one's arguing about anything in here. At least I don't think. You shouldn't be. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, T3. Yeah, exactly. C-SPAN for the best cure for insomnia on the planet. Wrecked, Foz. Nice. No one's, no one's arguing here. I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Maybe, maybe I'm letting my bias towards spaceflight cloud my judgment judgment it's possible like i'll admit it it's possible bit off topic and if you don't want to say it's fine but what was your job before i worked on a loading dock hand yeah why do you think i was able to figure out what the loading dock looked like on spacex's uh at spacex's roberts road facility dude because that's my ballpark man i know what a heavy do i know what a heavy loading dock looks like because i worked on one for a number of years dude the question is, who did the analysis? And it's quite possible they have they have some economic conflict of interest. That's a shame, Pythos. That's a real shame. It's a shame. If that's the case, we can't prove it. I I just it's a shame, dude. You know why? You know why this bugs me so much, dudes? Because this is the same crap that they said during Constellation. It's the same crap that they said. They said this. They said stuff like this. Oh, it's unsustainable. How? All right. What's unsustainable? The, the most sustainable way is if nobody launches into space. That's the most sustainable way by your definition because you're not basing it off of any market economics. Because there is no market, you know? They said this, and they said this, and they said this, and they beat this drum, and they had investigator general after investigator general, and they had commissions about this, and then they canceled it. And look, wh where are we? Where are we? The Constellation was canceled in 2010, 2011? Here we are, 11 years later, literally making the same mistake. 
the exact same thing. Only worse, because at least Constellation had a plan. Did you see the CNBC article on this? I haven't, Death. I, I went right to the source. And, dude, what I found is actually pretty dang appalling. You Like, I'm not trying to piss anybody off, and I'm not trying to ruin anybody's day, but, Death, honestly, they say that SLS is sustainable based off, basically, dude, trust me. Yeah, that's, from what I can tell here, from, from what we've been digging through here, they, they've been saying, well, we think SLS is sustainable. Why do you think that? Oh, because that's my opinion. L dude, it's literally that. And before, before you say like, oh, no, it can't be that. It can't be that. Dude, they literally, they say that. They say, in our opinion, this is, this is unsustainable. And then proceed to provide no details towards what a sustainable space program would look like. Dude, it's absurd. <laughs> like, it, like, I'm not even mad. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah, Sir Toy, everybody makes that argument. The problem is, is that, it's, you know, now is not the right time is the flimsiest of the flimsiest argument. You know why? Because if you say, oh, now is the right time to be sustainable and buy an electric car because gasoline cars pollute, that same logic can be applied to the other side. That's how you know it's not a good argument. Well, I think that, you know, right now we should have, I should be able to drive my gas guzzling car because that's better in the short term. It's, you know, you know, if you look at the climate record, you know, driving a gasoline car doesn't mess up the world that much. You, you can you're basing it off of no concrete metrics so the logic can be equally applied so that's a bad argument that's a, that's a very bad argument and this that's why like when i talk to people about climate change for instance which is a thing it absolutely is anybody that says this it is is a freaking moron the the rate that which you know like with climate change happens the climate's always going to change it's going to change whether we're here or not all right we're exacerbating it how we're exacerbating it we don't know but we have to, we absolutely are. We don't know what the effects of that are going to be. So we're hedging our bets against it. Okay? Like but once again, that's that's pretty that right there, you know, that's pretty straightforward concurrent logic. But if you apply shady logic like that, it can be applied both ways and then you lose footing for your position. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, Barrelicious, do you even have a sustainable program? What is a sustainable program? That's that's literally what I would ask this guy. And you know what? I'll bet you dollars to donuts the guy doesn't have an answer. Paul could very well be arguing it's not sustainable within NASA's current budget, maybe implying it needed more money. You know what, Pop? I'm going to go ahead and guess that that, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and think that, dude. I'm just going to go ahead and think that because to cite it, I mean, maybe he is. I don't know. I, I should, I, we'll read more. I've already read through some of the testimony, dude, and it, it didn't really seem like that, but I'll, 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 you know, maybe there's a conclusion. Let's look. Let's look right now. Screw it. Now's the right time. Let's go. They usually have a... A summary of everything up here. What we recommend. To increase accuracy, transparency, and safety of human spaceflight, we, rec na we recommend NASA's Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate develop a realistic, risk-informed schedule that includes sufficient margin to better align agency expectations with development schedules. Expand upon the existing draft Artemis IMS to include Artemis programs outside AES and ESD to properly align dependencies across all directorates. Develop an Artemis-wide cost estimate and update it on an annual basis. Okay. Maintain an accounting of per-mission costs and establish a benchmark against which NASA can assess the outcome of initiatives to increase the affordability of exploration systems development systems. Exploration systems development systems. Nice. Definitize outstanding Artemis-related contracts within 180 days in accordance with NASA FAR Supplement 1843-7005. Okay. 
develop a realistic funding profile and schedule given the underfunding of HLS in fiscal year 20 <laughs> fiscal year 2021 selection of one HLS award and desire to complete a sustainability contract for future lunar missions and seven identify measurable cost reduction targets for its ESD contractors we also recommend that NASA's chief engineer in coordination with the HLS program manager validate annual synchronization reviews to meet the intent and expectations of the milestone reviews replaced by the tailored acquisition approach. And the NASA deputy administrator in coordination with mission directorate associate administrators codify the remaining governance structures such as the federated boards and joint director mission. Could they make this sound any more boring? Yeah, Warlock, that's what I mean. That's the way to say it. You know, to say it any other way would be to is logic that can be equally applied to both sides of that system, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's that that hurts your argument, not helps. When you basically when you say, oh, you know, climate change, you, you know, we need to use electric cars because it, that's my expert analysis in my opinion. No one is going to. St All right, I think I should just keep using a gasoline car in my expert analysis opinion, in bu opinion buddy. Frick you, you use no metrics to quantify your statement. Piss off. That doesn't help. See what I mean? Yeah, Dr. Death, we looked at that. That's that's total cost involved, dude. Literally going from nothing to, uh, to a, a mission. Which is right. That's correct. And that might sound like a steep price. And $4.1 billion is a lot of money, dude. It is. It's a lot of money. Uh, I'm pretty sure anything else would be just as expensive. We could go and build a Saturn V and we'd get the same result. You build Saturn V, you could build, NASA could build a copy of Starship, you'd still get the same result. Point is, is that, you know, citing insustainability is ridiculous. Citing cost as, you know, like, okay. Citing cost as a reason for insustainability is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That That's really, you can't do it because what's sustainable? Do we have a sustainable way to get to the moon? We do not. So how can you say that? Now, don't get me wrong. This right here, this I actually agree with. I actually agree with, with, with the recommendation. There needs to be one centralized system for the Artemis program. It's kind of fragmented all over the place. I agree with this. There needs to be an Artemis program directorate, and there needs to be one person in charge of all of this. In charge of the entire program, coordinating everything and coming up with a cost structure for that. That could give you a projection about sustainability. I think that that's what that's what Paul is trying to say. I think, which you know what, I, all right, you know, all right, that makes sense. That's cool. I, you know what, I actually agree with that. That's pretty. That's pretty straightforward stuff. Basically, standard build the foundation and standardize the structuring system for how the programs are set up and have it all under one roof which it was until Bill uh, kind of decided exploration systems development should be a different thing, but hey, whatever. It's all right. Holy crap, you just argued, you just argued against 200 years of how the government worked, though. You and me, Celtic? Yeah, maybe, dude. I don't know. I think that's just me talking, but if you let are the articles logic on, let's say, yeah, crownless, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Now, Celtic, do you think I'm in the wrong, dude? Like, I'm actually asking. I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm. Am I, am I overreacting? Am I, am I, anal am I analyzing this correctly? Because it's hard to do on stream, dude. It's hard to do. It's very easy to kind of overplay your hand on stream. I'm not going to lie. But you see people, if you watch your favorite political pundit argue with somebody and they raise their voice because it doesn't make any sense. Like, dude, it's really easy to kind of lose your footing, especially when you're on the stream on the internet. Like, and I'll admit it happens to me sometimes. I'm, I'm wondering if I missed anything because I don't care. I don't care about being right here. I want to understand. That's, that's, that's the difference here. Yeah, okay, Celtic. Yeah, I got you. I see what you were saying. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, excellent.
Nobody can see the rest of us, just you. It incurs no risk from our side. Yeah, well, Warlock, exactly. That's why I want you guys to keep me in check. I don't want an echo chamber. An echo chamber is how... <laughs> An echo chamber is how you get a really nice journalism job writing for Ars Technica. <clears throat> what? Sorry, did I say that out loud? Oops. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to figure out the truth. And from what I can surmise here, the truth is, is that it's going to be expensive no matter what way we get to the moon. And it seems like every time there's the first sign of a cost overrun, which happens with every single aerospace engineering project, every single one of them, without exception, even SpaceX, it seems like somebody uses that as a justification for insustainability to get rid of the program. And where does that get us? Nowhere. And that feeds to, that, that feeds to the sustainability argument pretty much exactly. The most sustainable place to run a space program is on the ground. See, that's what I mean. That's a self-defeating logic. It makes no sense. Echo, echo, echo. Truth is always the goal, Warlock. I don't care if I look stupid being wrong or if I have a stupid take on something that it ends up being wrong later. I don't care. I want to, It's the truth. I, 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 don't, I want to know the truth. I don't care about being right. I'm dead serious about that, especially when it comes to the space program. Because me lying to you guys about something like that and having chat not come and correct me about things, is not. that's doing a disservice to you. The, you know, I could sit here and say that bananas launch into space on, you know, a Falcon 9 rocket. Like, I could, you know, but I, I, I <laughs> oh yeah, SpaceX just launched a banana tree into space. I mean, honestly, in this day and age, I'd believe that. Like, they launched, I mean, they put a Tesla up there. Why not? You know, like, they might knowing Elon. Yeah, exactly. Which was kind of a weird argument because Elon is, yeah, one of us. Super nerd, one of us. Um, so that might be a thing. So I can't really, that was a bad, that was a bad argument. But you get what I'm saying? Like, I want to tell you guys the truth. I don't care if I look wrong. That doesn't, I don't give a frick. It's not about my ego. That's the dumbest thing. Like, you know, people you know, sit there and imply that it's, that it is. It's not. I want to know the truth. <laughs> Space Gasto Pub. Yeah, right. Then we are a glorified Facebook. Oh. <sighs> You can't handle the truth. Recommend a quick scan of the management responses on the bottom. Sure. Uh, where am I looking at? Where am I looking at, dudes? One of us. One of us. One of us. Page 61. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I, uh, I always have to figure out if it's page here or what. All right, let's see. Okay, so this is NASA's response, correct? The National Aeronautics and Space Administration appreciates the opportunity to review and comment on the Office of Inspector Gator General dra draft report entitled NASA's Management of the Artemis Missions, dated October 14, 2021. NASA recognizes that the integration of Artemis, the focus on the moon to prepare for Mars, is of critical importance. The agency proactively identified that a restructure of the Human Exploration Operations Mission Directorate organization was necessary to ensure effective management of these strategic efforts. To that end, a new directorate has been formed, Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, led by Jim Free, to land the first woman and the first person of color on the surface of the moon and provide leadership and nationally and interna to provide leadership nationally and internationally as we take these steps forward into deep space. Under this new focus structure, the agency will be positioned to address the integration and management challenges to include schedule, cost, and performance represented by the OIG's findings and recommendations. NASA looks forward to providing updates on our progress in implementing the recommendations as we continue to move forward with the initial Artemis missions as the next step in human space exploration. In the draft report, the OIG makes seven recommendations addressed to the Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems, mission, Exploration Systems Relevant Mission Directorate, one recommendation to the NASA Chief Engineer, and one recommendation to, the, recommendation to the NASA Deputy Administrator, intended to increase accuracy, transparency, and safety of human spaceflight. Specifically, the OIG recommends the following. Develop a risk, 
Develop a realistic risk-informed schedule that includes specific margin to better align agency expectations with the development schedule. Management response. NASA concurs with this recommendation. NASA is developing an integrated master schedule for the Artemis missions that will include development and production and production schedule details from each program included in the mission that will be sourced from the contractor schedules and data. Schedule risk assessments will be performed against the mission schedules to identify margin and risk informed dates for the Artemis missions. The results of the scheduled assessments and program updates will be periodically codified in official planning updates to the Artemis mission dates and program baselines. The evidence of the implementation of this recommendation will be shown in, init in initial baseline Artemis mission planning dates as well as the Artemis mission integrated master schedule, including contractor informed schedules from the projects, from the programs and projects. Now, oh, I, I, I want to see where they disagree. So expand upon the existing IMS to include Artemis programs outside AES and ESD. Let's see if NASA disagrees with the investigator general. Management's response partially concurs with the recommendation. Yeah. NASA does concur that ESDMD advanced exploration systems will work with it will work with and include programs, projects, and other efforts across mission directorates in the Artemis mission. Uh, and the Artemis mission integrated master schedule that have interdependencies with or constraints to define Artemis mission content. I'll explain what all this means if you're th if you if I'm speaking Japanese right now. I I'll explain it in a second. NASA non concurs with including all Artemis related efforts that do not have an interdependency with the defined mission in an effort to preserve a logically linked and critical path driven master schedule that allows for analysis and clear distinction of content related to Artemis mission integration. Uh, ha -ha. Yeah, Barrelicious, what a terrible take. I know it's a joke, but geez. Those are indeed words. Um, so basically they said they want to upgrade the Ar Artemis master schedule but they only want to update it and come up with the, the critical milestones on systems with interdependencies. They don't want to come up with a master schedule for everything because that doesn't make sense. You come up with a schedule for critical dependencies, for instance. What, so what does that mean? Okay, um, here's, here's, here's how you can break this one down. So, and once again, if there's people that are out there that know this better than me, please correct me. I'm just making sure. I, I, want, to, I want to make sure we stay sharp with this stuff. So the investigator general just says make a schedule, basically make a schedule for everything and make sure that you make a schedule for everything in the lines and make sure that it's all, it's all into an integrated master schedule. NASA says, well, that's no, we, we want to, we want to upgrade the schedule. We want to make it better, but, uh, making sure that the VAB's electric bill is not something that is, con that not something that really gives you the flow visualization uh, over, over the master schedule. Like the, the, the lights being on in the VAB is something that just needs to be there. That doesn't need to be part of the schedule because it's a given. It's basically what NASA's saying. We don't, we, we want a full master schedule, but it only needs to be the stuff that pertains to stuff that's schedule driven. Like, like the rocket and the engines, for, for instance. <laughs> That, that's what that basically says. I want to see the part where they don't agree. Develop an Artemis wide cost develop an Artemis wide cost estimate in accordance with best practices that is updated on an annual basis. Management response. Non concur. Let's see why. I'm really curious. NASA's already following the best practices in agency an agency policy in providing cost estimates and comments for agency approved programs and projects. These cost estimates and commitments have a defined set of content over a specific period which is a best practice and meets the standard requirement for cost estimating. This policy also aligns with the estimates and commitments at a similar level to which funding is provided from Congress, which increases transparency. NASA does provide annually the President's budget request that includes the budget request requirements for all for Artemis content with a five-year forward projection. Agency approved programs and projects also establish cost estimates at their defined life cycles marked by agency key decision points or KDPs and provide baseline commitments to their development costs and operations with already established reporting requirements. 
as Artemis is a campaign of the agency's efforts towards lunar exploration and not an agency divine program with a specific set of content or period of time, a cost estimate for Artemis would not be in accordance with the best practices or provide additional transparency into specific development, production, and operation costs for programs and, pro and projects. Basically, we already are. Yeah, that's what that says. And it would be impossible to come up with any estimate because they haven't done it yet. Oh my god. Even NASA said this guy was wrong. That recommendation was mentioned in the OIG written statement to Congress, so they aren't over how NASA disagrees with it. Wow, these people are idiots. Hell Hydra. Oh my god. These people are... You need to tell me how much it costs. I don't know how much it costs. We've never done this before. Yeah, but you need to tell me how much it costs. If you don't tell me how much it costs, I'm going to say your program's insustainable. How can I How can I tell you how much it costs? We haven't done it. How can I tell you that? Well, I think it's insustainable. Hokey, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't, dude. <laughs> so we took a little bit of a deeper dive into the congressional testimony yesterday from NASA's Inspector General. And I found that the, well, not I found, we found here, Hell Hydra and I and a couple of other viewers have been digging. Schedules are, schedules are too good to make realistically, not easy to stick with when it comes to engineering. Yeah, Pythos. We, we basically found that the OIG thinks the SLS is unsustainable because they, they think it's unsustainable. Oh, that's just my opinion. Why do you think it's unsustainable? Well, it's my opinion. These prices are huge. But when I, when I say, oh, NASA even thinks they're wrong, the, the investigator general says that you need to tell us how much this costs. You're not being transparent about costs. And NASA's literally going, we're NASA. We, we, are, we are obligated by law to tell you how much this costs. This is how much it costs. Oh, well, I think that's unsustainable. How can I tell you how much going to the moon costs if we haven't gone to the moon? <sighs> Financial equivalent of a kid being a picky eater. Yeah, I don't like Chinese food. Why don't, why don't you like Chinese food? Have you ever tried it? No, I just don't like it. It smells bad. And it's funny because, Hokey, if you go down into the response, NASA basically says no. We can't tell. We can't give you a precise. We can't give you a precise number to how much this damn thing costs because we don't know. We won't know how much it costs until we do it, which literally is exactly concurrent with the point that I was saying. The investigator general says the program's unsustainable because he feels like it. Because you feel like it. Oh, well, in my expert analysis, well, what expert analysis? What analysis is this? How do you know it's unsustainable? Because we can compare it to another lunar program? Okay, that makes me feel better. Even NASA thinks, these, thinks this is stupid. That's good. All right, well, I feel better. I don't know about you guys, I feel better. I mean, how much money is a moon base? Tell us before it's made, please. So the person that's in charge of investigating NASA fraud has no idea how economics work. All right, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Great. Has no idea how economics work pertaining to a development-oriented program to get us back to the moon sustainably. Okay, that lovely, lovely, lovely. That guy literally testified in front of Congress yesterday saying that the SLS program to a bunch of politicians was unsustainable. Whew. 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 Wow. Nice. Though the example they could use is what the current costs are and make an estimate based on where they are in the pipeline, material costs, labor costs. Yeah, but Pythos, it would be a projection. And what if they get it wrong down the road? 
I mean, dude, like, a, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. I'm not saying you're wrong. And I, I think it's important to not go barking up this investigator general's tree. It's just... I guess, crownless. A rough projection is better than no projection. Well, the, the, NASA said that they're already giving their best... They're benchmarking each contract against the development of specific capabilities. NASA programs are able to practically and efficiently track success metrics regardless of changes to the mission manifest. Breaking out costs... Breaking out costs to align by mission may lead to inefficiencies in the tracking of these pivotal metrics and may... And may disincentivize the flexibility needed for contractors to continue innovating through changes in budget and appropriations. It's the next paragraph. As such, NASA categorically maintains current accounting and reporting practices, provides stakeholders the most transparency into forward mission planning and looks forward to continued engagement with the OIG to ensure that these existing practices are carefully executed and reviewed. Yeah, so it's just like, yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? Well, how much is it going to cure to how much is it gonna how much is it gonna cost to cure cancer? Well, I don't know. Oh well this program's unsustainable. Let's get rid of it. Okay. But yes, mind you, we had a model to base that on from like twenty canopy snaps. Like with canopy snaps on F22s, we made an estimate that takes into account twenty four hours to do a complete swap of the canopy, taking into account common hang ups and supply issues. But yes, mind you, we had a model to base that on from like twenty canopy swaps. Yeah, Pythos what I've been trying to say this entire time is that you can't tell if it's sustainable or not. You literally have no idea. There's no possible way in hell that you can prove that. There's no way. There's no way. Because there's nothing to compare it to. How do you know it's sustainable? This could be an inexpensive program. We don't know. You have nothing to compare it to. What are you going to compare it to? The Apollo program? Because this is a repeat of the Apollo program, right? You can't. You can't even compare it to that. And even if you did, even if you did compare it to the Apollo program, even adjusting for inflation, the costs for SLS are literally a fraction of the Apollo program because all the facilities are made already. The VAB, Michoud, Stennis, Marshall, they're all made already. The Apollo program built all these NASA centers. That's why the price was so high. It wasn't just about building the rocket. That was only a small part of it. You can't lobby an inspector. You can't lobby an investigator general, or an inspector general. Really, at least you shouldn't. That's this is government oversight. You can't lobby an oversight. Well, I don't know that for sure. I don't know enough about political science to be able to say that one way or another. Yeah, Mab. What do they mean by sustainable? It can't pay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, the guy, the invested, the inspector general basically said that Artemis is unsustainable because I think it is. Why do you think it is? Well, that's my opinion. Well, why is that your opinion? Because I think it is. And guys, look, I, I was right. Yeah, like, well, not I was right. We were, we were correct. You guys helped me figure this out. I was on the right track. I wouldn't say I got this right right off the bat. But not even NASA agrees with him. NASA thinks he's incorrect. It says this in the management's response right there. Okay, cool. All right, this has been discussed enough, I think. Are you guys you guys satisfied? Lobbying an oversight investigator is highly illegal. Yeah, okay, Kelty. Well, that's good to know. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Is there news about the 225? Last I checked, the thing seems to be in one piece, dude. I know everybody's saying it's destroyed. I saw a satellite picture of the tail sticking out of the hangar, and the tail was not burned to the ground, so... As far as I'm concerned, the Antonovs is still in one piece, but I wouldn't say that out loud because I want to see a picture of the plane. Until someone gets to Hostomel Airport and takes a picture of that plane sitting on its landing gear inside of its hangar, then I won't believe it, because there is a big crater right next to it. Hope that answers the question. Hope it satisfies you. Bono, you want them to get Bono? Dealt with this in a home... Over, home 
Oh, God. Homeowners agency remodel project. Condo board wants a price. Well, we can't estimate, can't know until they open the walls because they have no idea how bad it is behind every wall in every building. Well, the contractor needs to quote and eat it if it overruns. Literally no one will do that. Yeah, Mumenji. Yeah. Ridiculous. I think you're on the money here. OIG in general can say a ton of dumb crap. And I, yeah, Celtic, I don't, I never want to sit here and say that I know more than NASA because if I knew more than NASA, I'd work for NASA. You know what I mean? No, we need to discuss it further and analyze all the crevasse on this topic. My, optimi my optimistic assumption that there might be some significant enough damage to the N25 to put it out of commission for several years as they repair. Yep, yep. Dama, you redid the brake drums on the Datsun, going to get adjusted and testing tomorrow. Nice, dude. Good job. <laughs> you no, know, I... Alien, I'd work for NASA. I'd work for NASA and nobody would like me. I'm 100% sure of this. I would make a lot of enemies very quickly. Probably to the detriment of the space program, which is why I don't want to work for NASA. If you put me in a, if you put me in a position, I'm going to call people out on their bullcrap. We don't have time for this. We don't have time to we don't have time to hurt people's feelings, all right? Like or not hurt people's feelings. Sometimes this stuff needs to be said. Like that that conclusion from that investigator general, we literally did a better job in 30 minutes of uh, 30 minutes of analyzing findings. That's pathetic. They had they had six months to do this investigative report. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You just sit there this whole time? Oh, yeah, I'm OIG. I'm, I'm going to take the day off and go to the golf course. What are you doing? Uh, that's, it, and you know what? That probably wouldn't be a good thing. I'll be honest with you guys. It probably wouldn't be a good thing. That's not how you lead. It's not how you lead people. It's not how you manage. manage you don't manage like that. Managing like that's going to get nothing done. OIG is at NASA. It, it was an Office of Inspector General. He works for OIG, which is a totally different reporting structure. Well, that makes sense, considering the guy has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to spaceflight. Makes a lot of sense. I just want to look through this one more time here. What did Jim Free say here? Strategy is putting people on Mars, two people on Mars for 30 days and back safely. Everything we do should be driven by that. I want to go watch this again. Honestly, if you work for NASA, you'd probably be in the STEM outreach section. Unfortunately, I think that program's been a bit underfunded occasionally. Uh, they refunded it, dude. Yeah. They pulled money away from... Um, I think it was from exploration systems development. I think I, I can't. I don't remember. End of the runway at Hospital Airport. Why are they parked like that? Because they're abandoned planes. Because after the Soviet Union collapsed, like, and there was no, there was no way to maintain that many freaking planes, dude. There's abandoned planes all over Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. They're everywhere. Not war, notwithstanding, it's been like that for thirty years. I just asked because there are now more videos on YouTube that <clears throat> it is smashed. Yeah, there are more videos on YouTube that just want to tell you that this beautiful plane has been has been destroyed and it's a travesty of war and this war is wrong, etc., etc. And don't get me wrong, it, it is wrong. That's it's terrible. But also at the same time, I did a pretty conclusive analysis the other or er, two or er, not two days ago, yesterday. I did a pretty conclusive analysis of why the why I think the plane is in one piece. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. It's still, it's still, you know, it, it's possible. Um, here, let me let me find the let me find the. Um, here, Paul Byrne is a uh, planetary science, Earth and planetary science professor at Washington University. In you know, like. Yeah, he, he's pretty good. Pretty good when it comes to this stuff. When it comes to reporting about science and stuff. And here, check this out. Check this out. Don't count out the AN-225 just yet. I've superposed this drawing onto what seems to be the jet's exposed tailplane. There you go. Take a look. You tell me, dude.
Now, Rocket Guy pointed out something that this image is taken slightly at an angle, so the image is slightly distorted. So the nose of the plane more realistically is like right here. But I'll say what I said yesterday. You can clearly see light being cast underneath the tail. And I'll link these pictures. If you guys want to look at them yourself, go look at them. You can clearly see light being cast underneath the tail. Why is that important? Well, that means the plane's still standing on its landing gear. Because if it was burnt to the ground, the tail still wouldn't be in the air, don't you think? It would have burnt to the ground. Be because burnt that's what burnt to the ground means. It's usually what happens when something catches on fire. It burns to the ground. So to imply that the plane is destroyed when it's in fact sitting on its landing gear is a little bit uh, presumptuous. That and the tail isn't like bent. It's perfectly parallel with the hangar, meaning it's still attached to something, meaning it's attached to an airframe. Now, don't get me wrong. That airframe could be partially damaged. It's possible. That's very possible. But I would say that the... The airframe, the shape of the plane, I would say that the 225 is probably recognizable. And when most planes burn to the ground, really the only thing that you can kind of surmise like out of the debris is like an engine or a landing gear part or a tail or whatever. Like, I'm pretty sure the plane is, it's probably bruised up a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's still in one piece. It's not like exploded into a bajillion pieces. What is the significance of this craft? Well, that's the Antonov 225, Jackery. That plane. Largest, largest airplane in the world, dude. Yeah, Billy, it's cool. Yeah, exactly. Bill, that's right. Yeah. That's the tail for that plane. It's one of one, Jackery. It's... It's never, there's only one. Now there's one and a half. Let me put it to you like that. You know what this plane was built for? That's what it was built for. That's why I care. That's why I care so much. Because it's the Buran program shuttle transporter. That's right, Finn. Till I see a photo of that plane in, in pieces, it charred, charbroiled on the ground. I, I, I don't know. You don't know. It looks like, looks like, looks all right to me. Me to Eric. Wait, what? I see why you care. That's why I care. Yeah, that's why I care. What happened to the 747s that flew the space shuttles? One of them is at Johnson Space Center in Houston with a fake shuttle on the top. I don't know where NASA 911 went. I have no idea. There was two shuttle transporters, guys. There was NASA 905 and NASA 911. I don't know where the second one is. It's at Edwards, from what I can tell. Here, let's go see if we can find it. So 905 is in Houston. I'll show you. Uh, where's Johnson Space Center? It's over here. Hey, there's one of them. That's the shuttle, shuttle transporter. That's 905. That's the one that Enterprise hit off the back with that they dropped the shuttle from from 30,000 feet. That's that's one of them. And now the NASA article said that it was at uh, Edwards. So Edwards is over here in California. Uh, up here. Let's go look around, see if we can see it. C-17, C-135, stealth fighters, can't see them, they're stealth, see, there's nothing there, there's a K-1 
KC-46 right there. Oh, hello. Oh. Hey, pretty. There's one of NASA's F-15s right there. Ah, oh, hey, baby, what's your tail number? <laughs> Nice. Kill it with fire. Nice. Nice. Kill it with fire. Nice. Uh, I don't see it, guys. Nice. Nice. There's the X-34s before they wound up in a freaking chicken coop. Uh, F-16XL, a couple of F-18s, a couple of T-38s. Is that a white U-2? No, that's a Global Hawk. Unmanned, uh, unmanned high altitude drone for reconnaissance. Maybe it's at the entrance. Hold on. Um, here's the gate. Uh, there's there's balls eight right there. Uh, that's B fifty two serial number eight. That was NASA's test. NASA's uh, high altitude testing plane. Note the pylon right there, the fifth pylon on the right hand side for launching X fifteens. That's the north gate into Edwards. I don't see it. It's not here. But then again, these are old pictures. Let's see if we can... 2018. So it would have been here in this picture. Scanning. There is an airplane museum uh, right here. Nope, not there. Last, please. Not sure about the airframe, but it was used as spare parts for Sophia. Yep, yep. You respect the F you respect the F-15 active you. May not have intended to have canards on it from the start, but the whole point of the research was about the canards, and so it still meets your criteria. Yeah, meets my criteria for being dumb. Wrecked. Is it in the boneyard? I don't think so, Jim. I don't, I mean, I don't think. Maybe? There's another Global Hawk just doing its thing. Man, that Global Hawk has been parked there for a long time. What's down here? Anything? <gasps> nice. 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 Canberra, C-47. Two C one thirty fives, a B one, a C one thirty, an F one eleven, A seven, saber liner, boxcar. What the hell's what the hell's going on over here? Oh, oh, hey, how you doing? Hmm. I don't know. I thought those were stealth. Well, that one's clearly powered off. What about the two next to it? You don't see those, do you? Wait. It's a very expensive piece of concrete. Yeah. I don't see it, Jim. I thought it would have been, I thought it would have been here. That's what the NASA thing said. Here. NASA 911, one or two modified 747s that were used as shuttle carrier aircraft lands at Air Force Plant 42 at Palmdale. Oh, after its final flight, a short hop from Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards. Oh, from Edwards. So it's at Palmdale. Okay, hold on. Back up. Back up. Hold up. No wonder we can't find it. It's not, it's, it's not here. It's over here. All right, let's look around, see if we can find a 747. There's the Skunk Works. That's Lockheed. Uh, hello? Hello? It's right next to a B-52. Okie dokie. What part, Joshua? West End. Joe Davies Heritage Air Park in Palmdale. Okay. Oh, gosh. There we go. Found it. Oh, cool.
cool, man. Yep, there she is. There's the second one. Yeah, be like, you're not wrong. What's in this place? Whoa. Wow, that's rare. Yeah, not every day you see one of those. So we got an F-101, F-86, F-16, Saber Liner maybe? I don't know. A-4, T-38, F-5, F-100, that's a 101, F-4, that's an A-7, it's too short to be an F-8. There's a Rutan plane, F-14, F-105. Go ride it behind. Oh, yeah. Okay. They got a D21 and two SR71s. And then a U2. Oh, this is my new favorite place. This is my new favorite place. Ah, uh, uh, hello? Sorry, I, sorry, sorry, sorry. Whew. I'm not a plane guy. What makes these exciting? Uh, Kyle, those two, those two things right there, fastest planes ever, ever created by man, dude. Nothing goes faster than that. Nothing that's not a rocket. Rockets go faster than that, but that's the fastest plane. Beyond Mach 3, dude. What's that? It's a D-21 unmanned hypersonic reconnaissance drone. Or supersonic reconnaissance drone. It didn't work, Flaken. Yeah, D-21 is what it's called. Oh, ho, ho, man. Yeah, those are the fastest ones. Kyle, right there. Two fastest planes in the world. Nothing goes faster. And then there's the drone. Flyken, that thing was launched piggyback off the back of one of these things. Yeah, it's really cool. And they're just parked there? Let's go. They're everywhere, dude. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah, because they don't... We don't use them anymore. Uh, they're retired, believe it or not. Yep. That's the fastest. The only thing that goes faster than that are rockets and an X-15. X-15, which is also a rocket. Um, all these planes over here are just cool fighter jets from throughout the years. That, I think, is a KC-46. Or, not a KC-46. I think that's a, just a C-46. Um, not a C-47. That's not a DC-3. It's a C-46. Rare. There's only, like, two or three of those in the world. Um, and then the reason we were over here is because of this one, Kyle. That one carries the space shuttle. Or carried the space shuttle. See that? And then it's got a B-52 next to it with a uh, hyper... Ooh, what is that? Cruise missile. Sweet. No pylon on that B-52, though. Yeah, these are... <clears throat> these are. This is a really nice collection of planes. I'm not going to lie to you. There's an F-16, F-14, F-105, F-4, uh, F-100, F-5, T-38, A-4. I'm not sure what that is. I think that might be a Sabre liner, but I could be wrong. That's an F-101. That's a cool plane. NASA 911747 needs to go to the Smithsonian. You'll get no argument from me. It would be really cool to put that plane next to Discovery, or put Discovery on its back. That NASA plane, is that the U.S.'s answer to the 225? Uh, well, the SEAs came first, Flecken. But, yeah, that's its counterpart. Mm-hmm. This is a real... There's a lot of aviation history right in this square right here. A lot of aviation history. Yeah, that's really cool. And Hubble above? Yeah, that'd be nice. Do both shuttles have the same attachment points, though? Yeah, of course. They took the attachment points from an external tank and just glued them to the top of a set of reinforced fuselage 747. I say that like that's some easy thing to do, but it's not. So the snapping photos and whatnot just get detected and chuckled. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Missiles can't go faster than these. That was the idea. 
Why try to build the defense? Why try to build the defense for the missile? We could just go faster than the missile. So the first strategic reconnaissance plane, well, not the first, that, that's really not. The, the U-2 was kind of Lockheed's first attempt at building a strategic reconnaissance plane. U-2s can fly up 80, 90, 100,000 feet. Man, nah, maybe not that high. I'd say 80,000 feet. If I'm, rem It's off the top of my head, so it could be wrong. So they designed that. They designed the U-2. And they'd fly the U-2s over the Soviet Union. And the Soviets knew they were there. They could see them, but they can't shoot. They couldn't shoot at them. Could, they couldn't shoot them. Couldn't get them. It's not like we didn't know they were there. They could, they could see it on the radar. They just couldn't do anything about it. And they don't want to admit that the U.S. is spying on them and, you know, they can't do anything about it because they don't have any physical proof of it. Right? And then they shot one of these down. And then they did have physical proof. So we stopped doing that. But they had this thing invented by that time. That thing, you know, the U-2 flies up at 80,000 feet, but it doesn't go very fast up there. It doesn't, it doesn't go fast. It just flies really, really high. The SR-71 flies really, really high and goes really, really freaking fast. Mach 3 plus. So that's over 2,000 miles an hour. That's pretty damn good for an airplane, even by today's standards. So yeah, they just went faster. He tried to shoot him down, couldn't do it. Couldn't shoot it down, it's too fast. And then we kind of stopped using these because, well, satellites are better at doing that and really hard to shoot one of those things down. They're going 17,000 miles an hour. Yeah. Go faster, exactly. One guy designed every plane that you see right here. One dude designed all those. Why does Lockheed plane all, paint all the planes black, like the SR-71 U-2? Um, it has something to do with thermals, goalie, but I don't know. Yeah, there you go, Celtic. That's actually really neat. Yep, yep. Hope that one dude was paid well. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Those planes are coming back because the because those planes are coming back since they discovered the rivals can just track the space sats and hide the stuff. I don't know what you're talking about, man. They're retired. Remember? I don't know what you're talking about. And those planes were engineered over here. Those planes were engineered in this building. They were built and designed here. Guess where they were tested? Kyle, this should make a lot more sense. Guess where they were tested? They were test. They weren't tested at Edwards because there was too many people. People would have seen it, and people like to talk. So they chose someplace pretty remote, someplace out in the Nevada desert called Groom Lake. This is the reason why Area 51 was made. Homey Airport is what they call it. They built this to test the SR-71. True story. Now what it did after that? I don't know. I know that that's why it was built. That's declassified. Everybody knows that. Why do you think they why do you think they need a freaking 20,000 foot runway? What do you think was in the empty space? Mm -hmm. Yep. This was this was made to you know, in the 50s nobody could get out here. This is literally in the middle of nowhere. It's it's out in the Nevada testing range. There's nothing. There's nothing out there. How did they get the SR-71 over there without anybody seeing it? Well, they shipped it in a box. You think I'm kidding? And yeah, they shipped it in a box. Packaged it up and shipped it in a big box. It worked. <laughs> it worked. I'm just saying, it freaking worked. <laughs> no, I mean, dude, d think about this. We didn't know, the SR-71 didn't officially exist until like the 90s, officially. Nobody knew about that. Nobody, no, like people knew about it, but you didn't really know about it. You know what I'm saying? 
can you imagine seeing an SR-71 flying around? Around Groom Lake and being like, yep, aliens. Guys, all right, you've seen an SR-71, all right? We see, we see the dang thing, right? They, they look, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. They look futuristic even by today's standards. Like, look, they look futuristic by today's standards. See those planes? Look at that. If Lockheed came out with this today and was like, yep, this is our new plane, I'd be like, wow, that's really, that's really cool looking. Very contemporary design. They first flew this plane in 1958. Look at the freaking cars. Look at the cars. Do those cars jive with an SR-71 in your mind? Not a chance. I mean, I do like that 62 Galaxy, though. I do want that car. That, that's a very nice car. Yeah, it's a nice car. That's a nice Chevy truck, too. I'll take that. That's fine. The GMC in the back? Yeah, I'll take all of them. Yeah, Spoon. We can take all of them. It's fine. Those are from 1958. That was the first flight of the A-12, the prototype, Kyle. 1958. It's the type of plane you'd see in an XCOM video game, right? Bob GMC. Yeah, no, I, I like that. That's a nice truck. Speaking of Area 51, have you seen this? Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't want to know what that is, dude. <laughs> I don't want to get put on a list. <laughs> now, Kyle, it had electronics, dude. But in 1958, the electronics would have been... I mean, I've, dude, I peeked my head inside one of them at, at, uh, in New York City. Peeked my head inside of the landing gear well in one of those things. It, it looks pretty damn modern in there. But even by today's standards, it's pretty crazy, dude. And don't get me wrong, they weren't using a digital processor or anything. Well, at least we don't know. I mean, it might. But yeah, shipped it in a box. Just a big box. They cut the plane in, in two pieces. There's two... They sub-assembled it, basically. They assembled the front of the plane and they assembled the back of the plane. If you look... What's inside of the, the first box? It's from here, from the Air Force Roundel back. And then the second box is from the E in Air Force forward. I'm already on the list, dude. Just put it in a big box. Hey, it worked. Nobody nobody was the, anything the wiser. They just said it was they just said it was parts to an airplane. Alright. Actually I don't I forget what the I forget what the um what the alibi was, I I, I don't I don't I don't remember. I've read the story before. I forget what they said it was. They said it was. Uh, I forget. Somebody probably knows. They said they were moving parts to something, to some other project or whatever. Could you just show the boneyard for chat? What what, what do you want to look at? We've looked at the boneyard a lot lately. Jim, I don't want to look at the boneyard. It just makes me want to go back to Pima. How about we look at Mojave instead? Mojave has a boneyard. We haven't looked at that one before. Where Strato Launcher took off from, that's over here. Uh, well, Hobby works. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this this doing it for you? Yeah. Oh, an A three forty. Cool. Oh, that poor MD-11. So this is where airliners actually store planes at Mojave. They pay to store these things here. And they use them for parts. Keep the fleets running. Because planes out in the middle of the desert are just fine. They, they don't rust. They don't corrode. They don't do anything. They just sit there. There is a... Oh, an SP. Why is that there? Oh, look at a little stubby 747. Yeah, they're just plain parts. There you go, Celtic, right? Yep. They do occasionally wheelie in strong winds. Yep, yep. Salvage title? I'll take it, Kyle. That's a really special 747. In fact, special is in the name. It's an SP. 
It's a special purpose 747. It's stubby. Look at it next to another 747. See how stubby it is? That's not just the camera angle. It was a shortened 747 that was a special purpose one that's designed for long range. Yeah, they're really rare. They, there's not many of those around, which is cool. These over here, these are 747-400s, I think. Or they could be 100s and 200s. It's hard to tell. I'd have to look at them from the side to be able to tell you. Yeah, it does that, Flanken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at all the 747s. There's a DC-10 MD-11 right there. There's even two of these things. What are those doing there? Look at, look at that. Reverse swept, kind of almost reverse swept wing. Wait a minute. What's that doing there? What the frick? What's that doing there? I never noticed that before. It's a, is, that's a, you guys are, is that a Draken? Hold on. That's a Saab. Like the car company. Yeah, it is. What's that doing? How did that get there? Yeah, Saab. Mm -hmm. Saab made cars and airplanes. True story. <laughs> it flew there? Well, okay, that's fair. Oh, can I have one of these? Is there a TriStar here? Is there a TriJet? Any of these? I think those are TriJets, the blue ones. Can we take those? I just, can I buy one? How much is it? Whoa, a Convair. Dude, Convair 990. Wow, that's a cool plane. Oh, those things are so cool. See that? Concorde and the Tupolev 144 are the fastest jetliners around. You know what the third fastest is? That one. The Flying Telescope Sophia is a cool plane. Billy Sophia is a 747 SP, dude. Thunder Cougar Falconbird. Thunder Cougar Falconbird. <laughs> yeah, see, they just stack plane parts out here. It's fine. Oh, 747 cargos. Those are 400 car or one maybe 100 cargos. Another is that another SP? Huh. Nice, Mumanji. Yeah, see, bunch of 747s. Chop them up and use them for a real 990. Look at the shock cones. That's a real Convair 990. Whoa, that's super rare. I think the other one may have been an 880. This one over here is an 880 because it doesn't have the shock cones on it. That could be a Douglas DC-8 too, but that one right there, that's a 990. That's a cool plane, man. Yeah, look at the wings. Cerebro. It's designed to fly in the transonic regime, dude. That thing, that passenger plane can almost do Mach 1. Yeah. Those cones on the back of the wings are designed to fly in transonic. Oh yeah. Convair didn't make the most airliners, but they made the fastest. Seriously, that's the third fastest passenger liner, even by today's standards. The only two that are faster are the Tupolev 144 and the Concorde. Not in that order. The Concorde's faster than the Tupolev. Do you know where Sofia has its base? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, FM, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the third fastest, man. That's a cool plane. I just want to fly in a Blackbird. Yeah, we don't we all? Yeah, if you ever get out to Southern California, guys, go look at Mojave. It's weird, dude. It's weird seeing all those planes out there. But they are there. This is where Stratoliner, or Strato Launcher is. Yep, the plane we watched NASA Space Flight uh, cover, uh, take off and land at the runway. Yep, right here, Mojave. Have you ever checked the Boneyard in Tucson? It comes up almost every Space News Warlock. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. This there, a lot of cool stuff happens in, in the high desert in California, man. A lot of cool stuff happens out here. Yeah, damage case, I've sat in it. Mm -hmm. 
So is that like a pick and pull or how does that work? I think the airlines use it to store parts, Goalie. And by, I think, uh, that's what that's what it's used for. I wish it was a pick and pull. I'll bet you you could buy one if you know who to talk to. Bet you you could buy them. I don't know what the hell you'd do with it. I don't think any of these are airworthy. I'd buy this. Dude, I'd buy the 7.4. Why not? I don't know how the heck I'd get it to my house. You'd have to chop it up because it ain't flying there. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly, Bill. You could buy the... You can buy the parts. You know who to talk to. I don't know who to talk to, to be honest with you. you buy engine cowls. Yeah, you just buy them for spare parts. In fact, you know who you know who went in here a number of years ago and looking for spare parts. Actually, I can't confirm that it was Mojave, but I know that you can buy 747 parts secondhand around if you know where to go. Here, take a look. Watch this. Let me uh, prepare the picture. Here we go. So check this out. Let's tie it back into space. Look. So that's Falcon 9's Strongback and transporter erector, right? At Vandenberg. We watched a we watched a rocket launch off this thing the other day. So look what's pushing it around. I've seen that shot, Smirks. We shared that on Space News when it came out. That's an airport tug. It's an airport tug. Now There's a better picture of it if we type this in here. That's the high quality picture. Look at those wheels. Those are not regular wheels. They're 747 wheels. Yep. <laughs> there you go. If you needed more proof that you, if you know who to talk to, you can go find 747 parts secondhand. SpaceX's transporter erector at Vandenberg uses leftover 747 parts to roll to the pad. True story. I talked to the guy that built it one time. Or engineered it. Yep. Airplane tires. Yep. True story. Also Jason 3. Very nice. I don't think the TE needs to go as fast as those tires are rated for. Well... One time I talked to the chief, the guy that engineered this thing, Bill. I won't say when and where. It was just in my passings as a spaceflight nerd. I was talking to the guy uh, that engineered these things, and he said that Elon wanted it to roll out like an airplane. So, suggested rolling it out on 747 tires, and he's like, yep, that's a good idea, let's do that. So they made it roll out with an airplane tug and 747 tires. True story. Yeah. Makes sense. The tires are capable of handling the load. Yep. They wanted to roll out like an airplane, dude. It can handle the weight. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's not a problem. So, yeah. Pretty cool story, huh? Fun little rabbit hole about planes. I love planes, man. Planes are the best. It's better than talking about incompetent inspector generals, that's for sure. All right. So, shall we get into the Starship footage? Hey. So this footage is coming from our buddies over at uh, NASA Spaceflight. Uh, Mary shot this footage, Boca Chica Gal. Make sure you go over there and give them a sub. Do it. Do it. Johnny Red. Neat. Okay? Do it. Do it. In a little... After this flight, yeah. In a little bit. Why reinvent the wheel, wheel Marrakesh? That's right. 
Yep, yep. Nice shot. The rocket is not that heavy, but the strong back is probably very heavy. Yeah, agreed. How does Falcon 9 stay in line with the pad on rollout? Very carefully, Tima. It should go in a research album. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So guys, they tanked the booster yesterday from what I understand. I was I was streaming Tarkov though. Um, so clue me in. Did they, What did they tank this with? I don't, I actually don't know. So figured before I say anything, like do we, do we know? Did they fill it up with nitrogen or was it actual, it was nitrogen fill? Okay, cool. They still use them at 39. There's two of them goalie, isn't there? It was nitrogen. Cool. You don't like that color on the grid fins? I always liked the bare titanium fight though, so I thought the titanium looked amazing. But those aren't titanium, they're steel. Because reasons. You're red. Got him. Tower vented during the cryo. Can confirm that it was nitrogen. Nice, nice. Anyone know how SpaceX is planning to feed their astronauts or are they going to use NASA Space Food Company? Just a random thought. I don't think they know how they're going to do that yet, Ice, because they're not even thinking about it. You can't worry about feeding your astronauts on orbit if you can't, ha don't have a way to get them on orbit. That's how SpaceX thinks, one step at a time. So, um, the DM-2 astronauts, or not DM-2, DM-2 was two years ago. Um, the astronauts that fly on Dragon use NASA. They have NASA food because they're NASA astronauts. I believe that warlock. Mm. Cryo sleep. It's a synthetic blend of amino acids, proteins, and and minerals. It's got everything the body needs. It doesn't have everything the body needs. Chat, come here, come here, chat. So, what did you think of her? The woman in the red dress. She doesn't talk much, but if if you'd like, I'd rage. That could rage a much more personal relationship. Pay no attention to these hypocrites, chat. To deny our own instincts is to deny the very thing that makes us human. <clears throat> Big old bowl of snot. Nice side by side. Are they eating grits in that scene? Yeah, Pythos, they were, I think. How do you like your grits, though? Do you like them regular, creamy, or al dente? Hey, Thomas. How did the machines know what tasty meat tasted like? That's exactly my point. Maybe the tip would be what the machines thought tasty meat tasted like. Tasted like something like eggplant or tuna fish. Well, mine is tasty wheat. You ever had tasty wheat? They are tanking the pad, dude. Filling it up with commodities. You can tell because of the way it is. No, they're, they're filling up the pad with liquid fuel and liquid oxygen, indicating some type of testing in the future.
confirmed. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I'd like to know when the next loan shits, mate. I don't know, dude. It's pending FAA approval, but I also don't think that the pad is like 100% finished. Think they'll do a burp test with Super Heavy as in five second burn to verify? Yeah, probably, Jacket, I would say. I probably think that would be a prudent thing to do, don't you? Yeah, Bill, I mean, <clears throat> not to just parrot Elon Musk, but if that thing gets off the pad on the first try, I'll be very impressed. That, that would be, that would be one heck of an accomplishment, man. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Uh, that actually, you know what, speaking of that, I know what the, well, not I know what they're doing, but they're moving around stuff, and I wanted to show you guys. Um, here, let's see. So, that's what they're working on right here. Groundbreaking of phase one of Star Factory at Starbase. Building is expected to be over 300,000 square feet, 60 feet tall, and will replace all the large production tents. Building would extend, will extend almost to the fence of Highway 4. So it looks like we're not going to have any more Elon tents. Yep. I don't think they tore the tent down, per se, Chris. I think this is next to all three of the tents. That's what that picture was showing right here. These guys are they are moving around dirt and stuff, right? Um, I don't know if that's exactly where they're moving around dirt. I think those might be those excavators right there. No more circus tents. Yeah, this is definitely a more permanent building, though. That's for sure. Yeah, RGB took these pictures... I don't know how he knows that that's Star Factory. I didn't hear anything about a building being built here. To view the fill, full gallery, go to Patreon. Okay. Whoa. Damn. Can we assume that that means that they've got a real production flow plan now? Well, considering that they're building something very similar at the Cape, yeah, I would say that, I would say that they have the... Assembly like the production flow bill. Yeah, that sounds right to me, dude He knows a guy who knows a guy. Well, yeah That's that's ridiculous man, that's a big building Here let's look at RGB's picture see if we can look at it a little bit closer Okay, so concrete footings I wonder what those are. Uh, electrical. These are electrical conduits. Uh, basically, you put the wires in the ground. Yeah. 
See, you have some footings here that are non-uniform, though, fellas. Take a look. One, two, three, and four. I wonder what those are about. And then it looks like you have another set of something down here. And it looks like they've started pouring concrete, but there's these there's weird footings right here. I wonder what I wonder what they're doing here. Wash away machine metals. I don't think that that's what that's for, but th these could be, that could be a drainage basin, yeah. Yeah, Fozilla, I would, <laughs> I would say that the PEA is pretty damn conclusive, but uh, yeah, the FAA is going to do their due diligence because that's what they do. It's fine. It's okay. The pad isn't finished yet. No problem. Yeah. But yeah, if they're gonna build a more permanent structure here, I would say that yeah, that's probably a good indicator that the uh, that the PEA is gonna go through eventually. I mean, even Elon said in the Starship presentation that he thinks that their odds are favorable, which yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's correct. Piers to support propellant lines, where? Man, I remember when the tents when the tents just went up. So it looks like they're if I was if I'm looking at this right, it looks like they're gonna build this, right? Finish the building, right? With like a temporary wall right here. Okay, because see these footings on the far left? They don't match those. That's different. Which tells me that this is an exterior wall and that's still an interior wall. So what from what I'm seeing, they take this thing. They finish the building, they move everything in there, they take the tent down, and then they extend the building. That, I, if I'm looking at that right, because they're not gonna wanna interrupt production. And it eventually will take all three of the tents. Wow. Yes, no, that's true. That's an insane building, dude. That's a big one, man. That's very big. I wonder if they'll connect it into the wide bays. Or connect it into the high bay. Do you think they'll just leave it open? Or... Do you guys think that they're going to extend it? Because it looks like double the distance of the building is basically right up to the front of the high and the wide bay. You think they'd do something like, like Michou? So if you look at where SLS is made, SLS is just a big factory like that with a wide bay, with a, or with a high bay at one end. See? Think it'll end up looking like that? Longs at the bottom of the ocean. Wait, what are my values? Well, going off of the plans for Roberts Road, I don't think they will. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They would need to modify them adding doors to the other side. Yeah, that's a good point. Or either that or VAB transfer aisle. Yeah, either that or horiz go horizontal like that. But I don't think they would do that. I don't even know if Starship can sit on its side. I have no idea. I'm going to guess probably not. But who knows. But yeah, that's what those... Uh, th this nose cone production area. See the, two, see the two rings right there? That's in RGV's picture. Uh... They're right there. See, so those are those excavators right there. That picture was looking over here at this tent right there. So that's what reminded me. Hi. Oh, cool truck.
Yes, I know it was a Chevy. It had a Duramax in it. Did you hear it? Duramax. Yeah, all right. It's not as good as before, but I still like it. Not including SN9? Yeah, Bill, I'm kind of with you on that one. Thank you for doing space stuff and getting my mind off the news. I'm trying, Max. I'm trying. Yeah, Smirks, that would be difficult. Random question, but anybody know why the U.S. government always pretends Tesla doesn't exist when trying when talking about the electric car industry? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I have no idea, dude. I maybe they're saying that to make Chevy and Ford feel better about themselves. I, I don't know, dude. unionized business. You know what? Uh, maybe. I don't know, dudes. I, uh, Karen, I don't have the answer to that question. With that being said, it is really freaking... With that being said, it's, re it's really funny uh, seeing Elon reply to uh, to the, the president saying, hey, wait, wait, I'm here. Look, look at me. I'm right here. You know? <laughs> It is kind of funny. It's messed up from in more than one way, but it is kind of funny. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm, what do you mean? I'm right here. Mom, 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 mama, mom, mom, mom. Mama, mom. <laughs> what? Hi. <laughs> Mom, mom, mama, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> Damn you, ice cream. Come to my face. Any idea when the ISS is being deorbited? 2030 is the tentative plan, UD. I'd pr prefer it to be deorbited by one of those inside of its payload bay so we can, you know, not just have it burn up in the atmosphere, but hey, whatever. a lot of tape. I agree, Doc Com. Yep. Sounded like a Mustang, did it? Let me hear it one more time. Nah, diesel. Discovery, go at throttle up. Yes. Good ears. Hey, Trojan, what's up, man? Hope all is well in your part of the world. Eh, everything's all right. Can I have one of those? Hey, can I get a copy of that? What'd you do with my prototype? I crushed it. You did what? No, it's over. You're done. See, see Barbie and Ken over there? Gonna get off the hook. Mom and dad are too hooked up. But you. What? Sorry. Yeah, there's three there. They moved 21 over there, or 22 slash 21 over there the other day, Trojan. Lawn art. One with tiles, dude, yeah. Hear me out. Why buy a house when you can just buy a used Starship test article? I 
see no fault in this logic at, at, at all. I wonder what Starship's heading to the local airport. Probably 16. Yeah, sorry. What about me? I'm right here. I bet HVAC costs would be through the roof. What roof? Starship doesn't have a roof. Um, that's, that's really, that's really high up, <laughs> fellas. Okay, through the header tanks. Good man. Good man. <laughs> How can you just... It must be something you get used to after a while. Just... All right. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no. Dude, he's way up there. That dude is up there. He's up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I can't, you know, I could probably do it, but I can't say that I'd be good with this the first time. I'd probably be scared. But after a while, I'd probably do that thing. All right. Yeah, this works, right? Yeah, as long as I was buckled in, I'd be okay, but I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'd be cool with that the first time. I'd be very, very, I'd be like, this is nice. No. It's okay, he has the safety belt on. Yep. Yeah, Drez, I'm with you on that one. Front end loader. I almost said bulldozer. It's not a bulldozer. It's a front end loader. Now, when you say balls of steel, do you mean balls of stainless steel or... Yep, putting the crane boom back together. The derrick's up. Man, that was quick. Jeez. I prefer galvanized. Yeah, see those two dudes that are standing on the boom over there on the left? They're going to attach the derrick, the derrick um, ropes in, and they're going to lift the boom up so they can attach the next piece. Watch. I'm enjoying a treat, Derek. Derek! Yep, watch. They're gonna bolt her right in. See, each piece has an attachment point. And they're gonna lower it. I'm gonna attach that sucker right in there. The whole thing's a freaking huge Lego kit. Jibs. Hey, Devlin. What's up, dude? Really, Bill? Yes. Tier 272 from Access. Thanks, man. Ram. Ugh. Ram's got a busted up lip a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I just ran into something. It's not that bad, is it? Keep him busy? Good to hear. Why is everything about Derek? Because Derek's cool. Oh, there's their tanking test. It's They tanked it with nitrogen. Whoa. Hmm. 
That's very bing chilling. Bing chilling. I'm so hot for it. I'm so hot for it. I'm so hot for it. It's so cold. So cold. Sorry. I'm a burning volcano. I don't think many people will know that song. All right, never mind. Oh yeah, some something going on up there. Hey, what's that? That's gotta be a. That's gotta be the QD perch. Cool stars. Ah, the methane tank. Bro. Yeah, access. That may, that's my favorite thing to do. Every every video every one of these videos that we watch where someone's standing next to that thing, I'm just like, huh, wow. <laughs> that's not small. Alright. Do they keep it under constant pressure then? That's correct, Shado. Less fatigue on the metal if you keep the pressure constant inside of the tanks. Now the umbilicals for both of the the umbilical for both of these tanks is down here, so that leads me to think, what the heck is that thing? What's that thing? Of? Whoa, man! They really filled this thing up, huh? Holy cow! Huh? Oh, the RCS. Hey, it's not. Well, it's not the RCS. They're they're. As they fill this up, they want to make sure that the pressure stays constant. That's one of the that's one of the things about filling rockets up, dudes. It's tough. How do you keep you gotta keep you gotta keep the pressure constant. You gotta keep the pressure constant when you're filling it up with fuel, and you gotta keep the pressure constant when it's draining, when the engines are on. How do you do that? Well, when they're filling it up, they just vent the gas out to maintain a constant pressure. Simple as that. You use something called ullage gases on the way up. Now, where the ullage gases come from, they can come from a bunch of different places. On Falcon 9, there's helium tanks inside of the propellant tanks that vent helium and keep the pressure inside of the tank constant. There you go. Now with this, with Super Heavy, it's a little bit different. They use autogenous pressurization, or at least that's what they're planning on doing. See these little pipes that run up the sides? There's a tap off on each one of the, on some, well, I wouldn't say each, on some of the Raptor engines, there's a tap off cycle. So, some liquid methane goes into Raptor, gets turned into gaseous methane, and then goes up these pipes back into the tank. And then some of some liquid oxygen goes out of the LOX tank, goes into the Raptor engine, gets turned to gaseous oxygen or GOX, and goes up these pipes back into the oxidizer tank. That's how they maintain the pressure. Now, that's how they maintain the pressure when the engines are on. Right now, because they're filling, not draining, right? You can just open the valves. Just pss, 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 pss. keep the tank at a constant pressure. Delta P has to be within a very strict nominal window on rockets. You overpressurize, it pops like a balloon. You underpressurize, it crumples like a soda can. Yep, see? Now the cool thing is... Oh, something happened down here. Now the cool thing is, is if you look, the RCS on Super Heavy, the reaction control system, just tank vents. There's no cold gas thrusters like Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has nitrogen tanks up here at the top. And those feed little thrusters, and the thrusters help turn the booster around when it's in space so it can aim at the right target to land. Super Heavy simplified that. They got rid of all that. Literally, just op the RCS is just tank vents. Which, you know what? You can do that in KSP. You, you can do it. It won't work the exact same way, but you can do it. Yeah, they simplified it. They have hot, they have, well, cold gas thrusters, but it's shooting out gaseous methane. It's just tank vents. So I know what you're going to ask. Well, okay, if they're venting the tanks, how do they keep it at pressure? Well, the propellants are naturally boiling off, so the pressure's constantly going up inside of the tank whenever there's a cryogenic propellant in it. Doesn't matter if the booster's up there, flying around, or down here on the pad. Same thing. Sure, Gully. 
Yeah, Hell Hydra, you're not wrong. Now, I don't know what this thing is doing, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Oh, hey, I wanted to see that again. Man, look at that. Think it's cold right there? I want to remind everybody that in this picture, you and I are about as tall as the mouse cursor. Yeah. I just, just thought I'd let you know. Yeah, see the mouse cursor? That's about how tall a person is. What? What? Is it hot? No, it's cold. Damn cold. That's right, Shado. You have to keep a constant pressure. You don't want to swim in that barrel. I don't. I don't think. I don't think you want to swim in that tank. Not with that stuff in it. Unless you want to become invincible. <laughs> yep, yep. That's why you see rockets venting when they're on the pad. Because they're trying to just maintain the right pressure. That's cool, though, man. Look at that thing. It's really neat. You're as cold as ice. Can't mess with me, Ice King. I got the foreigner belt. All right. You're hot blooded. Go ahead and check it and see. All right. Well, you can't mess with me. I have the foreigner belt. The song's now stuck in your head. You don't have to worry about it getting stuck in your head because you're a. Wait, 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 wait. Cause you're a... Dirty white boy. <clears throat> How did you do that? Do what? So how are they gonna handle boil off from Mars? The header tank, Scully. If you have... Yeah. Yeah, the, the header tanks. Thought you were going to riff cold as ice? I don't know how to... I don't know cold as ice. I don't think the guitar is in tune either. <laughs> Not really. Explain boil off. Um, Taco, what happens when you put water on the stove in a pot, like if you're making noodles? You heat it up at one bar, so that's what your pressure is. You heat up the water, it boils. Oxygen, oxygen in order for it to be a liquid needs to be extremely cold, right? And the pressure needs to be really high. So if you have a higher pressure and a colder temperature, your boiling point goes down. Physics, man. Basic physics. The, pr the propellants are always boiling inside of these rockets. Any propellant that's cold is boiling. Liquid methane, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. <laughs> Cause I'm a dirty white boy. Dirty white boy. It's not, it's not A. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway. Does that make sense? Is the header Times New Roman or Ariel? Helvetica. Helvetica, dude. <laughs> Good morning, how are you? Just good, man. Look, 
Go at her! Screw that up. Take every go and drop up. Take every go and drop up. Blue Adder, thanks for the subs, man. I do appreciate it. Request hot for teacher. I, I. I can't play Eddie. No I can't play Eddie, dude. I'm not even gonna try. I can do this though. Badly. Do the remix, hot for re-entry. Request stair no stairway. Denied. Try that again. I can't do it without hitting the other strings, man. Ouch, still better than you. <laughs> Here, here, ready? Way out of tune. You have to, you have to get the. So out of tune, it doesn't even sound right. <laughs> Here, one more, one more, ready? Man, do I suck. What about Cochise? I don't know if I can play that either, dude. I Guys, we haven't sat and jammed on stream in forever. The guitar is way out of tune, I believe. Honestly, I haven't really been playing that much. King of the Hill theme song? Yeah, I don't remember. I'm blanking on how to how to play everything, dude. Especially like put on the spot. You gotta like. I'm just being self-conscious. Just play. It. on the car. 